And here we go with Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. Welcome to this D&D 5th Ed homebrew campaign. I'm the GM and largely res irresponsible for the world. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I have my players with me once more from the left to right. Please introduce yourselves and your character. Uh, well, I believe I'm on the left. So uh, yeah. my name is Pat and I am playing, uh, I almost forget his name, Silas Marsh, uh, local bard. You're muted, You're uh, Marie. Mute. Yep, yep, I thought about it as I started <laughs> talking. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Marie, and uh, I uh, am playing Annie, who is a rogue and starting to understand this, this fighting thing. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric, who is a little bit wiser now, somehow. A little bit wiser. Well, everybody leveled up the last uh, session, so uh, hopefully everybody's gotten a little bit of a chance to, to grow within themselves, um, as has been the case for a while because of the systems we're using. Uh, we'll be taking a break approximately around the one-hour mark for a few minutes, so if you're watching this streamed on twitch.tv slash encaf1, then uh, know that we will be back shortly after that, approximately a five-minute break at that point. If you're watching this on YouTube, you should notice nothing really happening at all. <laughs> I've been able to stitch these together uh, into a relatively seamless thing, aside from me saying, we'll be right back, and then we're immediately back, which is kind of funny. It doesn't give you any time at all, but you can always hit pause on YouTube. So we're going to return back to where we were very briefly where the group helped Professor Dudek Bitterhorn, a, apparently the last uh, member or, or a, a current member of the uh, mysterious group known as Argenti Segex, and they helped him defend Omatia against an invasion of a strange, squiddy creature, a very large creature, at this location that he's referred to as the Old Library of Argenti Segex. Uh, during that battle... Um, some summon constructs, uh, notably uh, the uh, uh, um, your own. Uh, wow, am I forgetting his name at the moment? Your old your own Boulder King Graveler. Graveler, thank you. Uh, was destroyed during that combat, but you have found his summoning stone, so you have hope that next time you fire it up, uh, Graveler will be restored. He'll be um, back. Dudek uh, similarly is somewhat upset about the destruction of his own uh, statuesque defender, Odak, but uh, does assure you that while it will take some time, Odak will return. He always does, after all. But the combat having been over, there's a moment to take a rest, to gather your, gather your breath. Um, Dudek is watching over the massive stone table, which has embedded crystals in it for some of the islands, and nothing seems to be happening. Uh, he's taking notes in a, in a journal that he's keep, kept with him, uh, a journal which has stone cover, uh, much similar to the journal that you folks have discovered before, uh, along with the ring and with the compass. Only the ring is Dudek aware of, the others you chose to keep to yourselves as uh, as your own information. Um, but he seems to be satisfied. Um, these things tend not to come too close together. So we should be safe for a while. Nonetheless, these have been happening more and more frequently. I can only monitor a few of them so far, but... I'm going to be traveling to each of these islands to see if I can locate another crystal, each of them. But uh, it's not easy so far. But that's the, the path I've decided to tread, after all. But thank you all for your assistance. Um, I haven't had so to deal with one. Sorry? So you're not planning on staying in the area? Uh, if you mean Elfladder and and uh, and the island in particular, not really. I know that the circus will be moving on, and for the moment, that is my primary mode of transportation. Beyond the doors, of course. But the doors can only take me to places I've already discovered. Uh, well, except for the root door, which can take me to each of those doors. 
It makes it quicker, and sometimes I've used it to travel to nearby islands, but it's a limited resource. I think the circus will be leaving in about a week. Then what do you want us to do? Well, there are many hopes and dreams that I have. Knowing that others might have some knowledge of Argenti Segax is helpful on its own. I, I suppose an old man's dream is that he might find others with similar interests to help him in his, his quests. But I know all of you have your own business to attend to. Nonetheless, at the very least, you can keep watch over uh, these pair of islands. Ascus is where you live, Icro not so far away. Um, on occasion, if you were of interest and could find me, perhaps you could assist. I haven't located an, a door path on Escus yet, and I won't probably find one in the next week, although I'll be looking. If you were to find that and let me know about it, it would establish another pathway for us here. A uh, question to the DM and other players. Uh, when we went in the stomach of that giant construct that filled with acid, there was a secret room in the sewers. Did, did, was, there, was there like a, teleport or a teleportation circle there? No. Okay. You I didn't be mixing it up with something like else. That. No. There were, there were a couple of different rooms you, you weren't able to open. Right. Um, and kind of left on their own. Um but you're you're not certain what we, what lay behind. There weren't any real markings yeah. on most of them. And one of the rooms we weren't able to get into was a uh, was that name. I can visualize his face, even though like I've never seen the character. But um, who uh, are you referring to? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Anything about him? That, about them that you can tell? Or... The guy who identified the vase. Oh, Doctor Marigold. Yeah. Yes, there was uh, one of the rooms was uh, a heavily uh, boarded and, and metal strapped door okay. that uh, I believe um, oh, Marda told you was his uh, his space. Okay. The um, sewers do flood on a regular basis, so any door down there has to be sealed very, very tightly if you want to keep anything of value down there. Yep. Emma, you're, you're on mute. But, but I unmuted myself. Um, the, the the other door that we, we couldn't open was we were told that there is a door at every torch, but we couldn't find a door at one of the torches. Right, it was one. It was next to one of the clear fountains. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway, I've just had a flashback, and it's like, hey, could that be a fuse? Anyway, <laughs> interlude over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he doesn't I will know anything let... about it, and if you don't tell him, he won't know anything about it, but... <laughs> okay. But uh, I will tell uh, Professor Bitterhorn that... Like, I'll give him the names, like Dr. Marigold might be worth talking to. All right. Where would I find Dr. Marigold? And I'll describe how, how to get to his shop. All right. What there was also... You... Uh, what um, what do you tell him why he's worth, or do you say anything about why he's worth talking to? He seems to be a person of the arcane or artifice things that Medric knows nothing about, but it's like, he seems like a bookish type, and Professor Marigold, or Professor Bitterhorn, also being a bookish person, it's like, hey, they, they would get along, most likely. Right. Never hurts to speak to a fellow academic. I appreciate that. He's been of great help for us to find the information that we have found so far. Mm -hmm. I will seek him out of my earliest opportunities. I have some obligations to the circus to keep the museum open, helping to pay for my passage and so forth. But my assistant can take over most of those duties. She's very knowledgeable, but 
doesn't quite tend to spin the tails as I do to keep the people interested. Silas wanders off to look at the books. Okay. Um, make an investigation check. Okay. Is there anything in particular you're looking for or looking to learn? Um... Hmm. Portals? Other worlds? Mother Hydra. Okay. Um, there are a lot of books and scrolls and other rolled up parchments all over this place. To really get a full idea of all of them would take hours upon hours. Um, mm -hmm. As you're kind of wandering through and looking at the different piles, they are sorted into into rough approximations. Um, there's an entire section which is about the geography of Omatia and different, um, uh, looks like history and politics and different things like that about each of the each of the islands. Um, there's another, and including maps um, of different eras. You can see some maps that are much older than others. Uh, that's mostly towards the, the uh, front part, not far from that table. In fact, kind of across the, the hallway from that table, which is a map of Omatia. Uh, you do find books that are about portals. Um, there's a, a bunch of them that you kind of pick one off the shelf, and it's thick with magical theory. Um, it's kind of like reading an entirely different language altogether. You can't really make out too much in it, um, although you can make an arcana check if you want to try to dig deeper mm -hmm. into that particular knowledge. It seems like a yes. lot of books and scrolls in that area are. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. He's a smart guy who's trained in arcana. Okay, you can certainly try to, to, to take a closer look at those. That whole section seems to be books on on uh, on, our, on uh, portals and extra dimensional uh, elements. There's even a a set of maps, but as you kind of glance through them, they're very contradictory um, to the point where, depending on which map you choose, you'd have an entirely different cosmology. Um, sometimes actually mentioning the names of the gods. When you're looking through this particular book and the the one you randomly picked off the, the shelf, um, you kind of understand what they're trying to say. The The details are still pretty fuzzy. You haven't studied magic itself, but you're aware of Arcana. And it, it deals with the, um, the different pathways in this particular book that can go between, uh, between different dimensions and portals. Um, Generally, there's there's talk about different measurable features of an area that might allow a passage more easily to be there. Uh, there is a little bit about um, portal stones are mentioned. There's no detail about what they are. They're sort of mentioned as if assumed, um, but you gather that they're useful for strengthening a portal and possibly making it easier to open one. Um so there's there's some interest. The, the book would take a lot more, many more hours of study to really understand mm -hmm. any that's in it, but it is of interest. He's gonna take um, it with him. Okay, just gonna uh, stash it uh, uh, openly or or surreptitiously. Hmm. Openly. Okay. No one's really paying much attention. Um, Dudek is kind of still concerned with both the machine he was working on, uh, as well as kind of chatting to whoever's nearby. What are Annie and uh, Medrick doing while Silas wanders around? Uh, that machine um, looks pretty smashed. Is he going to be able to fix that? <laughs> it. Uh, I, I know a guy who can fix it. You can right, make, a, you. Uh, make a make uh, a uh, let's say a perception check. If you had any sort of thing like tools and stuff, then you you would understand it more. But I don't think you understand any toolkits that are relevant. Certainly, let me know if you do. Character sheet. Oh, oh it's general my numbers perception. are updated. Damn it. <laughs> oh, they would be. Yeah. I, I can't use the auto roll. No. What do I do? Uh, math. No. Well, you can you can type into the uh, the chat area yeah. um, slash roll d twenty plus whatever. So just perception d twenty plus. Right. I just got proficiency in that because I am wise. Twenty three. Woo! Nice. So as you're looking over the machine, um, at first, anyone casually looking at the machine would say it's not a machine. 
they'd say it's a loose pile of junk that seems to be bound up with different wires and cables and pulleys. But as you sort of stare at it and as, and as uh, Dudek is working on it, you get the impression he's been working on it for a long time and he's repaired little bits and pieces. There's bits and pieces of different aged metals. You can see bits and part pieces of copper, which are very, very green. Others, which are shiny and new. Little bits of, uh, of sort of silvery and, uh, and uh, uh, grayish metal. Even some bits of stone. Um, so it's kind of a hodgepodge of many, many things. Um, in, there are definitely pieces missing. Um, and every time he moves the thing around, it sort of creaks with an, a very loud sound as if something is trying to turn but not able to. Uh, and he does kind of sigh. Well, it it should still be repairable, but this is far out of my my expertise. You said you know someone. Yeah, that uh, Jonas guy from... Right, I believe I mentioned him already. Ah, the right. One the, uh... the one at the lighthouse. Yes. Um, He's very ingenious. Do you think he's, and he kind of looks around a little nervously, uh, trustworthy? This place is not really meant for de to generalize. I believe he is. Well, if you'll vouch for him, well, I might be vouch able to for bring him. And I'll look at Annie. And I'll look for Silas, but notice Silas isn't there. You're still muted, muted. Uh, Marie. <laughs> Muting myself instead of unmuting my, myself. <laughs> um, I, I definitely uh, would vouch for him. They multiple times now. Well, if if that's the case, then that's someone I'm definitely going to put on my list to talk to. He uh, he, he was in town. He was in the group uh, that was actually. Uh, in the tours before us, so he's probably ah. not too far. I think I remember the person you're talking about. I remember, it's been a while because you've actually been here discussing things for a while. You sat down by the yeah. fire to talk. And oh yeah. The whole fight. So oh, it's yeah. it's probably been like an hour or two since you actually yeah. left. Um. Uh, he he had his daughter and young son with him. Well, I I'll uh, I'll. Keep an eye out. I think I know the family you mean. I think that my assistant had to chase his son out of a back part of one of the exhibits at one point. That, so that sounds like him. <laughs> well, curiosity can be rewarding uh, if it's not too dangerous. Uh, I'll have to talk to Jonas if I can catch up to him then. Anyone else I should speak to? You understand, of course, that I have to be somewhat... Um, Careful. I've trusted all of you partially because you came informed, but also because at least one of you is bound with one of Agente Sagex's rings, and that gives me much confidence. They have a habit, as I've said before, of finding those who can be trustworthy. But I fear that others have made attempts to find this place, and I've encountered more than one who've tried to, um, well, gain my confidence. This place has a wealth of knowledge that some feel is not to be known. Maybe something that you could do if you don't feel comfortable with them coming here right right away would be to talk about the issues that you're having with the machine. Maybe. Uh, before bringing them here. See, so you get a vibe of the person. I'll see what I can learn. It's difficult because this is not my domain of expertise. I've been interpreting this machine as best I can, given what I've learned from many of the books here. But there are still things about it I don't entirely understand. I've, the precise way it works is actually one of them. How it is able to do what it does, I, I'm not entirely certain. I'm only glad that it was able to do it. I've Jonas successfully... was able to use a star stone. Jonas built a device to use a star stone to power the lighthouse. If anybody can fix it, I'm sure he'll. He's one of the better ones, one of the better options. Good to know. A star stone, you say? Well, yes, it was drained by the sea devils, but there's a small amount of power left in it. 
Mm. Well, they are quite powerful if used correctly, from what I understand. Also speaking quite... of Starstone, I'll... What? Sorry, keep going. No, no. Go ahead. Speaking of Starstone, I did lend him the uh, tiny Starstone to power the machine, right? I, I think you thought about it, but it was too late. He had already donated the sword to the machine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, another item which was consumed by it. Well, it sounds like the strongest person is the person to talk to. And Marigold, right? Yes. Yes. I don't be alarmed by that creepy creature that hangs out with him. That's his servant. We had talked about Vase, Vase McFa Vase face dude, so I, I would yeah. mention that it's him who identified the vase. Ah, so that he's a, a, an Athlonian scholar as well. He, he at least knew, knew enough to identify what the name was. Hmm. Interesting and more he, interesting. He dropped the name of somebody else, uh, Clockwinder. But apparently this clock, this clockwinder may be up to some sketchy activities. And is also very hard to find due to enjoying his privacy. We haven't been able to locate him yet. Hmm. Well, if I come across this uh, clockwinder, I'll be sure to uh, ask him a few questions, too. If he also has knowledge of these things. Just be careful, though. Apparently... Uh, were we told that there might be traps in his warehouse? Or is that just something we assumed? <laughs> you had gotten I, I some don't... vague warnings, I believe, um, because uh, Marigold is familiar with Clockwinder. Okay. Uh, but didn't tell you all that much, aside from be careful. I believe. It's been a while. Well, I do try to be careful. I haven't lived this long and, and been as many places as I have without being at least modestly careful. Granted, if... Odak was with me for part of that. It'll be a while before he's back to full service, I think. And we we did mention Regalesta, right? Uh, yes, because it was an Athlonian you knew. Okay. So if she's still in town, we can try to get you two in touch. That would be utterly intriguing. The Athlonians didn't do much in the way of portal research. Um, from what I understand, they were actually an, almost entirely against it in a certain way. But their, what remains of what they had done that I've been able to find is more on the opposite side of things, in the protective side, the, re the reduction and dismantling of portals and rejection of extra planar incursions. I believe that at least part of this machine is based off of their plans. But it's hard to be for sure. But if this is a living Athlonian, well, and one favorable to assisting, that would be significant. It would. And if we run it, or, right, uh, I can probably contact you if we find anything of interest. How would you travel to us, though? Well, for the next week or so, I will be docked here with fresh bread and the rest of the circus. After that, it's more difficult. I have no means of uh, teleportation, aside from the door, but um, messages are possible. Getting to you after I leave here will be more difficult, unless you are able to locate the uh, the, um, the Argenti Sagax gateway that might still remain here. It is my understanding that at one point they had one on almost all of the islands. Not so much up north and not to the northeast either, where the hobgoblins live, but but in most of the places, even on the Orcish Isles, I seem to recall, but uh, they are difficult to visit casually. Understood. But magical messages are certainly welcome, and 
I may have at my disposal some teleportation. At some point. It's a research of mine. So far, most of it seems to be coming through via... Um, well, additional portal work. Rather than direct teleportation, it's... From what I understand so far, it might be more possible for me to tunnel through another plane rather than directly to any particular place. That seems dangerous. Exceedingly, yes, yes. But exciting, nonetheless. It is the way of Agente Segex. Um, they found... We found uh, extraplanar travel almost, uh, well... Almost... Uh, Without any reserve, we would... It's hard to explain. Uh, during your interplanar travels, have you ever seen these large warm creatures? And I'll describe like the, the worms we saw in the uh, the House of Horrors. I, I just think the Mark itself, but... mentioned that they looked like the things that we just fought. Okay. They looked similar to... Um, those ones were more independent, where this one was also like one being with multiple worms, mm -hmm. um, whereas those were smaller worms that just sort of seemed to move independently. Um, Annie and Medrick, please make an insight check. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's good. An uh, 18. Ooh, Okay. Um, as you're describing this and you kind of make that opening of in your extraplanar travels, have you noticed these things? Um, and you pick up on a little bit of hesitation from Dudek's response. Um, it's only brief, but it's sort of like he's, he's possibly going to tell you something, but then hold something back. For you, Medrick the sense is a little more clear that first he responded to on your extraplanar travels have you ever noticed and there's a little tinge in the corner of his eye almost an embarrassed tinge uh, as if that particular part of what you said uh, triggers him and again there's that hesitation but decides not to say anything at that point and instead at the very end answers I've I've not seen them directly but I have read of such creatures um, they are, well, opportunistic pests is one way to put it. They tend to, how should I put this, consume um, the, uh, the barriers between dimensions. And when there is a breach that occurs, they are often found uh, fairly shortly uh, feeding on it. It's almost as though the flow of energies or the flow of beings or whatever from an unstable portal bring them. If what you've seen is indeed that, and not just an illusion, uh, that would suggest there was some sort of extra-dimensional breach happening at that particular point. I didn't d notice anything myself, but I don't have the instruments to necessarily pick up something which is once removed from our own plane, if that's what happened. They are very dangerous, um, but they don't tend to be very plentiful. Now, in your case, if there was already a breach underway in a smaller pocket plane, then that might have provided them with enough interest to join in. They are similar to the creatures you saw earlier, but um, one might describe them as less evolved, I suppose, less sophisticated than the uh, the breacher we saw a little while ago. Somehow related, but I haven't found a specific uh, relationship between them. Thank you for your insight. Well, sorry about the background noise. <laughs> um, and and further to that you, you do get the impression that he was being honest and that he hasn't seen them directly and he has read about them uh, 
but he also has limited knowledge, um, as though even what was written about them itself was uh, very, very limited, and he's guessing at some of the other implications there. Okay. But I'm trying so the, to appear like confident. The slight embarrassment was because he didn't know the answer? Or? You figure the slight embarrassment was actually because he's never experienced it himself. Oh, okay. And... We did actually, tell him last time that we did experience this in the uh, House of Horrors, right? Or did we leave out that part? I don't think you guys had mentioned much about where you experienced it. Okay, um, then I will... Well, if you want to check out the House of Horrors, uh, it's closed now because of the breach, but that that's where it happened. Well, I will add that to my list. And he pulls out this small pad and adds uh, that there as well. You've given me much to think about. Um, that Willoworth's um, house, as you call it, as he's called it, is a pocket dimension, sort of. But it should be entirely benign. Um, there shouldn't have been any real concern about it being breached. Pocket dimensions don't typically sidle up near any other dimensions. They have sort of their own existence. Contained within an item, usually, or within a spell, if it's very, very limited, but his is a permanent effect. If indeed it had gotten breached, that would suggest something more serious has gone on. Perhaps something else had taken up residence there, I suppose. Hmm. Interesting. I meant to ask him more about that particular thing, but he's very quiet about it. Reluctant, I suppose, to... Give up his bread and butter, I suppose. That would make sense, yeah. It's not entirely the right thing to do, but... And, Medric, further to your, your insight from before, you had this creeping suspicion that, that feels more and more confirmed the more he talks. Mm -hmm. He's never actually gone extra-dimensionally. He's never okay. traveled to another plane. At least that's that's sort of what you're guessing at. All of his knowledge is either theoretical or has been taught to him by someone else. But he doesn't really want to admit that. Okay. So Silas has been reading for a while. Are you going to rejoin them or are you going to stay reading for a while? You guys can stay here as long as you want because there's been no particular reason to give you the bums rush, but Dudek is busy with his machine. Um, Silas is going to go look at the other machine, the one with all the god symbols all over it. Okay. He had described it, I believe, as an orrery before, um, representing the, the relative positions, placements, strengths, and existences of multiple planes with respect to Omesha. Um, he pointed out some features of it before, some of the, the uh, distinct uh, symbols that are there. The most recognizable, as I've mentioned before, is the Tandu Arch, which seems to have the most solidity of all the symbols. Um, knowing a little bit about Tandu, uh, actually you guys don't know much about Tandu, unless you, do you have trained religion, Silas? I don't think so. Nope. Okay, so you don't know much about Tandu other than it's some sort of dwarven, uh, dwarven god. Um, you can make an investigation check into this machine if you want, or if you have another skill which would be relevant, I'm open to that. He's going to cast Comprehend Languages as well. Okay, that will definitely help. He probably would have done that at the start of looking at the book, to be honest. It might not be in common. Um, let's see. Four. Uh, just checking some details here, but um, unfortunately, the machine is is both simultaneously um, simple and complex. Um, the individual spires don't seem to have any particular uh, uh, complexity to them. They seem to be as much simple arms to hold out these symbols. 
Um, there's a, a, a weird feeling if you touch any of the, the metal plates on which these symbols are resting. Uh, kind of a, a feeling almost as though the metal itself is moving or shifting slightly, but it doesn't seem to move. It doesn't have, it's not soft if you try to squeeze it at all. Um, the core of the machine all seems to turn in and wrap around that empty space in the middle, as if it's that's what actually provides the, the more uh, sophisticated um, uh, control and manipulation of the rest of the machine. There are some symbols on each of the different spaces, and with Comprehend Languages, you can actually rub your hands on those symbols and start to get a sense of them. Um, Basically, they are labels for each of those gods that were that are there. Uh, God, sorry, not just gods, gods and other creatures yeah. that are there. Uh, and I believe I had read you the full description last time. I'm not going to do mm -hmm. that now, but you spend some time studying it, but don't come up with too much more than we'd seen before. At least yeah, not yeah. as it is right now. Yeah, then he'll head back to uh, Dudek to uh, ask him about something. Okay. Um, in the meantime, um, if there aren't particular questions that Annie and Medrick have for Dudek, Dudek chats kind of amiably about some of the places he's been uh, and some of the other doorways that he has access to. Um, kind of, um, you know, uh, there's a, he talks delightfully about, where are we here? Uh, pardon me, I've got two scroll and it just jumped on me um while he's talking metric is just like trying to recall like the places we've been and is there something that could look like a door what do doors look like anyway <laughs> <laughs> like catron's I mean, temple didn't have anything like that right uh the berry temple didn't it was kind of it, it was literally the inside of a of a, a geode okay. um more of a natural space than than an actual um uh, room because it was buried underground. There was a, a, a tunnel in the earth that actually led to it. Up above in the actual temple, there were many doors, but most of them were just simple arches. Um, there wasn't anything particularly fancy about them. The only fancy door, in a way, was the is the secret door which leads down into the tunnel. Um, but you already knew the secret of how to open that. You discovered that. Um, One thing that I would mention at some point is, is uh, just before I forget it, uh, if ever he finds out anything about the other name on Alaria, I would be really interested in finding out that information. Um, the other name. Yeah, because there was another name oh, that started yes. with an E. Yes. Uh, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for something, and then I completely looked at something else. <laughs> which is... Uh, uh, yes. As far as I know, it's an older name, but I was somewhat surprised, too. The symbolism looks right for Alaria, but the name is older and, as far as I can tell, forgotten. But certainly if I find anything more. I've looked through most of the books that are here. Over the last 200 years, it's been rather dry reading, but I'm sure there's one or two languages I haven't quite mastered yet. But I will certainly try to find out more. Why are you particularly interested in Laria? Is that where you're from? I'm just, it, it is. I'm, I'm just curious. I've, I've studied a lot of history over the years, but I've, I had never heard of, of that. Well, if I, there's anything to be learned, I will try, but um, unfortunately, much of history has been lost. Even as many books as we have here, so many more could be found, and so many more could still be written. Definitely, there's, there's too much knowledge that gets lost over the years. Indeed. And uh, Silas, you're coming back now. Hearing, uh, you know, Dudek, is, his voice carries in these stone walls pretty strongly, so it's not hard to, to find where he is and where the rest happen to be as well. Okay. 
I am afraid I have very little to eat here. So if anyone else is feeling somewhat peckish, we'll have to return to Eothvater for that. Um, before we go, um, Silas will take out the stone cube and use the ring to open it. You all see that uh, Dudek seems very surprised to see the stone cube and kind of subconsciously starts uh, turning the ring, uh, his Argente Segex ring, uh, on his fingers. Um, kind of almost as if it's if it's, if it's uh, uh, the same resonance, actually, Silas, you would have felt when the ring is nearby the, uh, the cube itself. Mm. But the, the cube opens and reveals the compass inside. And Dudek kind of comes op- over eyes wide. You, I believe this fits your machine. You the have machine. one of the guys. I, I didn't. Uh, you've been holding this from me. I, I'm, and he's kind of uh, speechless, but at the same time, kind of looking reverently towards the the compass itself. Um, and he kind of you reaches above towards... all people must understand how. Uh... This must be kept secret. And indeed. I wasn't I, sure if we could trust you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to have earned your trust, and this goes all the way to you earning mine, too. Where did you find this? With the ring and the other book. And you've no idea where it came from. Yep, and we never mentioned the other book to him before. No, we we had mentioned the book because I had mentioned the Under King. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you well, actually mentioned the book or so much as the Under King itself. Because mm. uh, you kind of kept the book uh, silent. But if you're mentioning it now. Yeah. Silas is mentioning it, yeah. And he's kind of reaching towards the, the compass. And you can see there's sort of a delight in his eyes, but also a wonder and a worry all kind of mixed together. I, I think this is exactly what is needed to power the orrery. Uh, and he sort of reaches towards it. Do you let him take the compass out? Sure. I can murder him if he decides to steal it. <laughs> um, there's almost a spark that jumps from his finger as he touches it. He flinches a little bit, but then pulls it out. It seems to be in good condition. He turns it over. Yes. You Strange. Know, uh, have you I'll turned any out, of them dials? No. Uh, I'll point out what I've figured out about it, about it being able to sense portals, but that there's a number of other things on it that I'm not sure exactly what they do. Well, these are, well, frankly, somewhat legendary, but one of the greatest creations that the Argentus Segex had ever made. You're right. Uh, its use as a sentry mechanism was one of its um, field uses, but so much more. But you say you have not changed the dials. This is as you found it. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So the sensory part is slightly complex to use. These dials align with month and week and day yes. and time, as well as alignments of the moot and a little bit more. As a sensory device, it's as much used as a predictor of when certain um, planar alignments are going to take place, generally trying to um, predict when uh, the gates might be made more easily, or if they might appear naturally, as does sometimes happen. The planes are distinct most of the time, but on occasion they orbit each other and will intersect. Uh, it is possible to deflect at those intersections, those, those points, uh, if you have the right amount of energy and and the necessary power and, and so forth. Um, so they can be used in a predictive method, method like that. Um, but they can also be used to measure the strength of the existing moment 
uh, to determine how you might create a portal. At least, uh, in theory, I never actually was able to hold one myself. Uh, and yes, I, I believe this will fit into the orrery, which, well, let's see what that does. And he starts to walk down mm -hmm. the hall towards the orrery in, in fairly quick step. Mm -hmm. Silas is following right behind him. Well, so long as no tentacle worms pop into the place again, I, I suppose. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure it'll be okay. I'll follow it also. It'll be okay, because we leveled up. Sorry about that. Um... He, uh, yeah, he quickly and kind of hurriedly moves, kind of forgetting about everybody else behind him. Uh, even though he's a bit shorter, he's kind of almost running towards the orrery at this point. Um, slows as he approaches it, um, almost as though a little bit of uncertainty has crept into his step and into his stride. But then he kind of works his way around the multiple levers and other things uh, surrounding this this gigantic metallic uh, silver and, and uh, brass and green thing uh, and very carefully sets the compass down in the center. It fits perfectly. In fact, you hear a little bit of, of an extra click as he pushes it slightly into place. Now, if I've been able to rig this up properly, and he goes over to that part he'd, he'd that I described before, where it looks like a hand crank essentially has been attached onto one part of the device. Uh, I could use a hand with this. I'm not as strong as I once yep. was in my youth. Silas will help. All right. I'll help too. And the handle is actually pretty long. It, it looks like you've kind of had a feeling of you go more than one person. It also looks as though it might have been built for Odek to handle. Um, his construct was a little bit stronger than he is. But, How much strength do we need here? Like, Well, I want uh, each of you that are helping to make a strength check. Oh, yeah. Athletics will count. And he I am will assisting also make... uh, Medrick, so he gets advantage. Okay. All right, athletics roll. Um, so that's his it's check. 21. Uh, I'll join in on this. Okay. So advantage, there's, it's 21. <laughs> and uh, it's at uh, you have it at advantage, uh, Medrick. Yeah. Yeah, we rolled. I rolled oh, sorry, I see the 21 and yeah, 12. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 my, my contribution is a 7, so I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to get kind of at the end of it, and uh, and it's got a surprising amount of, of, of resistance. You get the feeling, uh, Annie, that that may, when you grabbed it at the end, maybe you were just you were just the wrong angle, and you were kind of working against the very piece of the machine itself. And yeah, you it looks like you're 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 helping. My my initial feeling was I I probably won't be able to help much because I don't have any strength, but I, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the side going, "You can do it, Medric. Go, go, go." <laughs> Uh, it's more like ten minutes left. Yeah, to actually to actually help, you're probably standing on the opposite side from Medric, kind of where he is in the same same lean. Uh, between Medric and uh, Dudek, however, you are starting to slowly crank it. It takes a few minutes before you're really getting more than a, than a single rotation. But during that time, you're starting to see the different arms start to move and turn around. What's really strange is they aren't just moving in place but you can actually see the symbols on top, some of them representing, uh, you imagine, some of the, the outer dimensions, some of them representing uh, inner dimensions, some representing godly dimensions, themselves start to morph and twist as though melted down and reformed into something new. Whoa. Um, the, uh, the, uh, uh, so as you start to crank, it starts to, to pull them all together. Uh, it seems to crank easier once you get started uh, and then there is a a uh, loud clicking as ever, and everything seems to go very very solid uh, at that point um, the plane of Omatia, which is the center point of this of this uh, device is intersected in fact by half a dozen of the of the uh, planes 
um, you notice that that some of the ones that had these large uh, barbed balls on them are now very, very close and actually intersecting with the, the surface of it. Strangely intersecting because everything seems to be solid metal, and as you go to inspect it, it does feel like it's just one melted statue. Um, one way, to, and, and Duda kind of tries to explain that um, it's, it's not as though it is truly here and that we are moving it just in place, but rather that it is a, a, an entity outside of time, and then as we move the, the levers, we are actually changing not the physical manifestation of this thing, but its temporal manifestation. Um, as it is right now, it will be aligned to those points which we were setting up, which the compass was originally set to, and able to show, oh dear. And as, I, as it describes, there's, there's about a half a dozen of those large uh, uh, balls that are right into the surface of Omesha itself while the godly ones seem to be distributed further away. And there's one which is midway between the two. It's not as far out as, as Ignis or Marina or Marius, but in fact uh, uh, kind of midway. And the symbol seems to be weirdly in flux. It seems to be there for a moment and then shifting away and, and kind of diminishing and then folding. And it continues to do that, even though the rest of the device has, has stopped still. For and Silas, touch it. oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I took a good look at the symbols that were on the the relics that uh, Catherine gave. gave. I, I believe I rolled a nat twenty on that. Mm -hmm. Do I do I recognize that symbol? Uh, yes, you do. Well, rather, you recognize one of the states it seems to be in, as the symbol itself seems to be in flux. Um. When it is at its at its least fluxing point, it is a very distinct set of three lines in a curved wave, which you recognize as the symbol of Paluxia, but it is in flux. Uh, it is it is as though it is trying it is melting and then returning and then shifting again. Silas, when you touch that spot, uh, it continues to move under your fingers. Uh, but you get a sense of actually make a wisdom saving throw at this particular point. <laughs> I still have comprehend languages up too. I think that lasts an hour. It, it works for written symbols, not necessarily for yeah for yeah. visual symbols. But you uh, would see a, a, a rune okay. on the on the base plate, which is a removing and coming back. Wisdom um, save. Yes. Okay. And that's player knows Paluxia. The name isn't popping up in my brain. Uh, the play, is it the magic? player would know it. it. It is magic. Then it's a 15. 15? Okay. Which is good. Um, images and thoughts and so much more start rushing through your mind. Um, you can feel, however, that just as fast as they are rushing in, another force is rushing behind them and erasing them. And you're left with a sparse glimpse. Um, in some ways, one could one could imagine this as the yin and yang symbols, where you have a force that is moving forward, ever forward, trying to create a crest in this circle of, of brilliant white light. And then another force, which is moving equally as strong behind it, consuming the first one. And the two of them are locked in balance at this particular point. And... Little bits and pieces start coming uh, to you, but you're unable to grasp them. But you are smart enough to remove your hand before the backlash starts to reach into your own mind as you feel some of your own memories start to be erased or placed into this. It is as though this is a manifestation of something much, much greater. Um, but even then, you kind of step back, almost half was... not realizing you've not touched it, and blink. Silas snaps his hand away and says, nobody else do that. Why, what happened? It, my mind was full of, inf, was flooded with information. And then something erased it all. And then it started to erase my mind. Whoa. So, <laughs> uh, my expert advice like, is nobody do what I just did. 
And you so can see like Dudek already confusion. walking over to it and kind of reaching out his hand hesitantly. <laughs> Slap! <laughs> uh, he so looks at you like aghast. Like confusion. I understand the inclination. <laughs> I, I think that's whatever was erased. Because I, I recognize see. that symbol from somewhere. Do I recognize yeah, it? I think... I think well, it's... I I I, I specifically to find a place. don't don't say where where I recognize it from. Yeah, uh, yeah, we get three minutes. Yeah, we're gonna wrap up this part of the scene and then we'll take a break. Uh, Medric, Do I recognize the symbol? When Annie kind of points it out, um, and you kind of take and focus a little bit, you do start to recognize the the sort of ultimate form of the symbol. So if you imagine it being a wave of three lines that curves up and kind of has this this wave like shape, um. The, the thing that happens essentially is it re- goes out and then immediately zips back to nothing and then goes out and zips back to nothing. Each time it pulses like that, the amount of time it spends as a full symbol is shortened. Okay. Almost as though it is actually losing this battle. It's one of those weird optical illusions, though, because while you feel like it is diminishing and not able to produce the full symbol every time, it still is. As though your perception of the time that's happening is itself shifting somehow and do you recognize is, what it is though uh you do recognize it um as one of the symbols of of Paluxy, of the dead god that that uh, Catherine had uh charged you with and asked you all to help eliminate from the world because it was extraordinarily dangerous and with that we are going to have to take a break i'll let you guys I, think about that yep. i'll be right back <laughs> Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. So please return to our stream. And there we are once again, back after a very quickish break. So the orrery has become active and has moved as you've, as you've turned the uh, lever. And this strange platform midway seems to be hovering just above the plain of Amesha while other platforms, again with this sort of spiked ball motif, are intersecting with it. Um, having touched it, Silas discovered a very strange effect, and Dudek, while reaching for it, was quickly admonished by Silas with a slapped hand uh, not mm-hmm. to. From what I believe this to be showing us. This was the moment in which the compass was stopped. Uh, this was the moment that they were either searching for, or perhaps had been experiencing. It's impossible to know exactly what. But I've never even heard of anything like this before, and he points to the strange moving symbol. It still seems to be oscillating back and forth between a sort of a... a a blob or glob of of indistinct uh, metal out to the shape and then back again. This is an important moment, but I don't know what it means. So I think you, you might... said no, you go first. Sorry, go first. Like... Um, we think. Maybe this was when a god died. What? You mean... Or something like that. Or you I describe... What, what you describe, there was memories or information flooding your mind and then getting erased immediately. It sounds like a personal version of the Great Confusion. Maybe the Great Confusion was caused by this god dying? That, that was my belief, my theory after everything that we've seen. Yeah. This symbol it shows matches symbols we've seen in some places that were shortly after that lost or seem to be where they shouldn't be. Now that's not the only disturbing point. These other intersections are problematic. Remember, as I was telling you before, that when planes intersected, a portal or a gateway might be opened. These are all intersecting in different parts of the world. 
These are all. It, yes. What time? What time is the compass set to? When is this period? Well, and he'll go over to take a look at the compass again. I'd need to consult with my astrological charts to really know for sure. Um, it's, it's approximately. Well, that's strange. If I'm reading this correctly, and I only glanced at it before, it's about two years ago. Hmm. Uh, that's, would Medrick that's... remember, like, the year he went to the war that was forgotten? Uh, make a history check. History, that's not one of my strong points. It's definitely not one of my strong points. <laughs> Numbers, what? Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> um, A non-natural one. Yeah. The, the exact year, uh, I mean, you don't really bother keeping track of the years. They're not that important most of the time, and you go where you're needed. Um, but if you kind of try to work back a little bit from uh, when you first arrived at Ilthvater and came off the boat, which was the, the return after the victory that you didn't remember, um, that had to have been at least, you know, two months on the boat. Uh, and you think you know your age, and that had to have been about a year ago. Maybe a year and a half? That would have been... Uh at least according only, to your numbers. I've only been gone a few months. But uh, my memory of forgetting was while I was on my way here. Dumb question, but uh, does anybody remember when that war started? Do I? You can make a history check. If, if as... Nat 20. A hey, nice. 24. Nice. Uh, if I'll everybody... Answer... Yep, go ahead first, for... Silas. Well, if everybody forgot and the intervening time was erased, I don't know if we'd notice it, except in comparing it to other places, as uh, Dudek was mentioning, where some places have lost a lot longer time. Um... But in comparison between uh, where you two come from and here, there might be a difference. But I probably wouldn't have noticed it. So, Annie, you start to think back and you start to try to piece this together. And it's strange because, like everyone else, you've experienced the great confusion. Um, memories get very, very fuzzy uh, and, and some specifics get very, very confusing. Um, you did have a memory dream which of a, of a great tsunami, essentially, while you were on the boat. But as you start to think back and you start to think of the time when you left, um, you left your home, you left Alaria, there was no war when you left. There was no fighting. There was no call for it. Um, you would certainly remember that, you believe. You would remember that if there was a war going on, it would have been harder for you to leave, probably, as so many more soldiers would have been around. Or, or maybe maybe you could have taken advantage of it, but you don't remember doing either of those things, having a problem or being easier. You remember there being no concern of it whatsoever. Larry was at peace. So, I wouldn't have left if there was a war. That may also have been a concern, yes. So, so you, That would you, be dumb. <laughs> you, <laughs> hey. So, <laughs> so you get this weird sense of sometime after you left, and then, and then a, a few months before you came here, that's when this event happened. And if it was only two years ago, you can't account for two years. You can only account for a few months on either end. This is the, uh, the representation of the orrery's um, measurement of uh, the celestial intersections at that particular time. Uh, but if, if that is a time in the past, if, if that's when this occurred, 
we, we should be able to move further forward to the present day. It should only be a, a small matter of resetting the, the compass's dials just a little bit to bring it to the current day. Um, I'd, I'd like to do that with your permission, Silas. I, sure. I, I, Silas, I am happy to fuck around as much as you want. <laughs> this looks interesting. Right. Um, and he moves around to the front uh, and pulls out the compass. The moment he pulls out the compass, the cycling stops, but it stops at an indistinct stage. No matter where it had been in its in its cycling, it, it stops as a sort of blob on top, um, which he looks at with some interest, and it takes him a moment to kind of pull himself out of his own reverie. You can imagine right now, and each of you can kind of see his eyes are wider, uh, and kind of shuffling a lot as if he's just, there's so much that he's thinking of right now, trying to piece together that Dudek is almost overwhelmed. The normally expressive and talkative and, and uh, cheerful Dudek is just full on academic mode, full on problem mode, full on amazement as well, as you can kind of tell with the widened eyes. Silas puts a hand on his shoulder and says, you've got this. Have a bardic inspiration. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good uh, because he. Then while he's doing that, Silas is going to try and find out where Mother Hydra's symbol went to in that whole jumble. <laughs> okay. Uh, your bardic inspiration is D six at this point or D eight? Uh, I think it's. Oh, I'm not sure. Let me see. Where's my list of abilities? It should be a D six, I think, but I wanted to check. I forget what they. Start at where's no, I believe it starts at D6, and I don't think you've taken more than a couple of levels. I've only got one level in it, so if it starts at D6, it's D6. It should be D6. I don't think it starts I can't at D4. Find it on here. No, it's definitely not D4. Okay, I think I forgot to put my bard stuff on the character sheet. Well, whoops, I'll have to fix that. Oh, bardic inspiration D6, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, you're no longer a bard. It's not on your sheet anymore. It's it's faded in your pat. No, um, it's, it's part of that two years. Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was in the uh, missing two years. <laughs> uh, Silas, um, you can go ahead and make an investigation roll as you're kind of looking around. You also notice as you're looking closer, and and all of you after this initial shock have had a chance to kind of look at it again, and the number of arms has changed. Uh, in right. fact, it's almost doubled in the number of arms. You don't remember kind of when they formed. It's this weird sort of thing of this of the the not even a blur because it wasn't moving that quickly. But uh, the number of of things that have changed, uh, it's it's like an optical illusion. And now you realize that there's more than double the number of arms. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that while there were a number of arms underneath, now all of them seem to be uh, right up close to where the bottom plane of Omatia is, some even touching and intersecting. Uh, and uh, Silas, you're having a difficulty locating Mother Hydra's. You, part of it is you, can't, you couldn't really follow where it was to see where it went, but there's just so many arms there now that uh, you're not really sure if it's kind of subsumed inside another one or whether it's just blocked from your vision by the sheer mass of them. Um, looking sure. at it, though, it is, it is as though where everything seemed to be in a, in a regular amount of space away from Omatia, everything rushed in at once. Um, it's kind of like what Capron was explaining, things trying to fill that void. That would be a logical conclusion from what you've seen so far. All right. Um, also, Annie's face has gone completely white and she's sitting down. Kind of <laughs> maybe some breathing exercises or something too. I don't know what her state is right, <laughs> right now. She, well, she's some, freaking out. Know. She she thought she's been gone for like three months. Hmm. Two years is a lot longer than she ever believed. All right. So I just want to look over and say, they're they're fine we would know if something had happened to them there was no war when i left i would have known if there was i wouldn't have been able to leave yeah you probably running through annie's mind as well is that you spoke to gaetano 
Yeah. Who probably should have known, but Gaetano was at sea. Um, Dudek turns over the compass in his hands, and you can see his hands kind of shaking a little bit, whether it's from excitement or nervousness, you're not sure, but he starts to manipulate the dials. Uh, Somebody and, should be writing those symbols that appeared, the ones trying to fill the void. Uh, I have Duda, my notebook. I start doing that. <laughs> Duda kind of pauses halfway through. Uh, right. Yes, of course. Uh, and uh, with Annie's notebook already out, he'll just bring it over rather than trying to write it down himself. I, I turned, I adjusted this one and kind of uh, points to one of them that he's adjusted, explains the adjustment. So you can very easily copy down the, the placement of each of the different symbols. Uh, and I'm also going to copy down any, like, in the jumble of things, any of the symbols that seem to have attacked. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the best way my brain can put it. Unfortunately, most of them are indistinct. Most of them mm -hmm. are of that style of kind of uh, what looks like a, uh, a stone ball with spikes emitting out of mm -hmm. it. The spikes do have different lengths. The balls are of different sizes, but there's nothing otherwise distinct about them. Okay. You get the impression that perhaps whoever built this, they had categories for certain things, and these are more representative of categories than they are in distinct uh, individual creatures or realms like the god realms. But you can okay. make an attempt at it. Uh, I'll make uh, make a perception check as you try to try to uh, uh, catalog this. That metal die is rolling great today. <laughs> uh, that's an 18. Nice. Nice. So make a note uh, in your notes that you got uh, an 18 on trying to gather the map of the planes. Um, so now. Uh, let's see how Dudek does. Okay. He rolled really badly, but the inspiration from the you got this uh, significantly helped uh, his roll. Mm -hmm. uh, as he starts to to spin the dials. Right. And then we have this one. And you can see him kind of muttering to himself little bits about, and then Marina should be in this position as last I observed it. And then Marius was just below the horizon and as he's trying to kind of do the recall of astronomy in his head, which is probably not a smart idea, but he seems somewhat rushed at the moment. Um, and then he frowns and um, he looks down on it. Hmm? Oh, Silas can try to help if it's about nav uh, uh, navigating by stars sort of thing, because he does have navigation experience. Uh, you do feel that's relevant, yes. And so you can kind of start the, the, the con uh, discussion with him. I'll have him roll one more time. Uh, as you do feel that the the there is correspondence to astrological charts uh, of of many of these things, although what he's describing is as much about stars which appear and disappear as they are about stars you can see in the sky. Um, but it does help, certainly with the the moons. So I'll have him roll again at advantage. That's a bit better. Oh, sorry, he doesn't. Oh no, he does get the uh, the. Um, D6, because it applies to the whole roll. Um, so it was a five the last time, so it'll be 23 in total this time. Uh, as he, he uh, um, frowns a little bit, something's wrong. I, I, it's, it's, I can't, I'm trying to move it forward in, in, in a few months at a time, but it, well, look, and he shows Silas, and as he turns the dial, the compass changes, but it skips over certain settings. You saw him turn it only one step, and yet it's five steps ahead of that, and then another thing has already shifted to be further ahead of that. It's as though it's it's rejecting these settings. That's impossible. It's not meant to be done that way. If they removed that period of time I thought maybe you, we we can't I thought you it. I thought you meant they simply removed or, or clouded memories but this like was actual removal of time 
That shouldn't be possible. If if the gods removed another god, I think anything is possible. There must have been a reason for it. Maybe these creatures were trying to breach in and the removal kept them at bay. Well, if if the orrery is telling truth, and I, I can't believe that it isn't, then Omatia was overrun by intersections with very unstable dimensions. Dimensions of 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 demonic proportions. Many of them. And he kind of looks in wonder at the at the thing as as Annie, you're also trying to sketch this and at at the point at which you're trying to capture this it's it's difficult because it's like three dimensional and intersectional and so many other uh, so many other things are sort of colliding at the same time. Your sketches are kind of looking kind of crazy <laughs> because there's I, I, the kind I, of loops and turns and twists everywhere. I feel like if if it's supposed to be groups of things, I would have more clumped things together. Um, for example, if there was like 12 of those circles with spikes, I would have put like circle a circle of spike and like tw the number 12 in the middle or something like that and well, as, just to get a general idea sure and as you're looking that closely at it and kind of paying attention you realize that some of those smaller spheres some mm -hmm. of those smaller uh, uh spiked balls they're also intersecting with each other on occasion yeah and whatever that implies is is kind of up to you i suppose um but you see kind of Dudek go over and kind of looks like he does a quick count. I see at least 36 of them. That even, I've never even heard of 36 different dimensions of this type. I, I um, But if I keep skipping over a time that doesn't exist, then maybe I can find the next time that does. And once again, he starts manipulating the dials, this time kind of making larger movements. Uh, it will be another roll. Uh, he doesn't have the bardic inspiration, but you can help him again if you want to. Or if you have a different idea, sure. Silas, you can also move to that. Uh, I don't remember using any bardic inspirations in the fight. So I think he's still got two more. He'll give him another one and, again, try to assist. Okay. Does Medric have guidance? I do. Let me find it. Yes, all the dice. <laughs> you got this. Uh, find what, where's my spell sheet? <laughs> there are some mysteries I cannot answer. Oh, it's a cantrip, okay. Yes, yeah. he has guidance. Okay. So it's a d4? Yeah. As you kind of... How do you how do you uh, bestow your guidance to to Dudek in this moment? What's it look like? I'll focus on. I'll try to like connect with Ignis, put my man, put my hand on his shoulder, and just kind of whisper to myself like, "Ignis, grant him the power to not fuck this up." <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a, a, a frontline soldier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you kind of as you kind of put your hand on on his shoulder just to give him the guidance, the the thing that surprises you and and Dudek particularly, but all each of you can have your own reactions, is that normally you're used to a bit of flame forming around your hand whenever you cast a spell. Yeah. Cantrips are very minor, so there's not much more than light and a little bit of heat, but not much damage. In this particular case, it is not coming from your hand, but in fact the distant symbol of Ignis actually flares off a little bit. Cool. As if responding, as if the symbol alone is enough to kind of correspond with the god. Which surprises you a little. It momentarily stops Dudek as it kind of goes, huh, that, that's not supposed to happen either. It's a day of surprises. Well, for, judging from when I touched it, I think they have a connection to the, the things they represent. Whoa. And from now on, I'll stay focused on the Ignis symbol. See where it goes and what it does. 
to you? The little flame symbol appears to flicker and move as if an actual flame made of stone or made of metal. So he'll make the roll. It's a 20 to start. That's pretty good. 20 total. Nice. And for the advantage roll, doesn't really do any better. The roll was terrible. He rolled a two. Uh, actually, no, that's right. The eight is better. So that yep. is a 26. Yeah. Between the two of us, we gave him a 20 with when he rolled a two. That's true. That's true. Uh, well, actually, and, and Silas gave him uh, the, the extra six bonus that he needed. Actually, sorry, a total of, of, uh, of 11 bonus because the D6 turned into a five. So uh, and the additional uh, plus six from rolling an eight instead of a two. Anyway, no need to attribute all the math, although I just did. Uh, he comes up. Do you have a clever way of the, him doing this, Silas, or do you want me to come up with a clever way? Because I, I have one in mind. Uh, um, I don't really have anything, no. Okay. So the, the, the clever way that he comes up with it is that he starts skipping over larger periods of time. And instead of the dials going from, uh, from uh, the moons backward, he goes from the other ones out towards the moon. So basically, he literally skips over large chunks of time trying to find the spot to land on. Um, and when he finds one that is stable, um, he kind of pales a little bit. This, this one, this one is stable. I, the compass, the orrery can be used as a predictive mechanism. It, it becomes a little less stable, a little less certain about those predictions because things can be changed in the future. But if, if this is, if when inserted into the orrery and if we can move to that time, um, and if this is now, as opposed to some point in the future. Uh, this is a larger leap than I had expected. Um, by my reckoning, the previous one had been two years prior, which made sense given some of the travel I've done and some of the places I've been. But uh, if, if, this, if this is correct, uh, this... The compass represents a passage of almost 800 years. I don't understand how that's... So that's the, the next stable point is 800 years from now? Or is this point that we're at 800 years later than we thought? The Great Confusion lasted for 800 years. Well, and are we in the middle of it or at the end of it? If this is a stable point and one the compass can find, this is now. Over 800 years, 803 to be precise, and a few months and change, but those are hardly significant compared to the hundreds of years. <laughs> if, if this is true, oh, it means I'm one of the oldest dwarfs who lives. And I'm the oldest human. Years. It's true. Your title is probably okay. bigger than mine. I'm slightly older than you. Admittedly, I'm not exactly human. But... <laughs> Pure well, human. <laughs> it may not have been uniform either. It's, 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 uh, an effect this large may very well have been inconsistent across the wall of Emisha. But... Uh, Hmm. Well, shall we uh, see what the orrery has to say? Yeah. You better start he'll, cranking. He'll proceed I think over. Uh, Medrick is perhaps yelling at his cat. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think that there's. He's finding. Uh, he's looking at the flame of Ignis and seeing a cat that's trying to put out the flame of Ignis. So, uh, oh, he's, he's he's back. We just assumed there was a cat putting out the flame of Ignis. So you were, you no, were it was it. like a phone no call from a healthcare yet. place. And it's like, oh shit, I, I better take that. But it was a wrong number. <laughs> really? <laughs> so uh, he, even more shaken than before, Dudek kind of goes over to the uh, orrery with the compass. And it's a little more cl clumsy. His hands are noticeably shaking. Um, from his indication, this should, this shouldn't even be possible. But he puts it in the in the uh, place. It snaps into place as it does before. 
Um, and he proceeds to organize everyone to crank. I'm going to need the, uh, it's going to be three successes for the success. And I'll tell you what happens with failure. It's only one shot. Uh, everybody participating can roll, or you can give advantage to someone else because any roll is made at disadvantage as you find that it does not want to turn. So uh, up to three people, up to three participants. I am aiding, uh, uh, Medrick. Okay. And I'll give somebody guidance. You can guidance yourself if you want. Okay, it's true. Wait, do we all have to? Do we all have to go at the same time? Or it'll be one set of rolls. Okay. Okay, and so we need three successes, and no failures. That is the the beginning set. Yes. Okay. Um. Let's see if I have anything that can help. Give me two seconds here. I'm just gonna open this bigger. Um. Yeah, so da, da, Silas da. is giving advantage to whom? Medrick. Okay. Mm. I'm guidancing myself. Okay. Actually, if Medrick's guidancing himself, uh, uh, Silas will assist. Uh, I can't do anything to help myself, so. Silas will assist Danny. Okay. Okay. Um, I am going to make the suggestion because of how leverage works is to put Medrick, who is the strongest one of us, at the end. Okay. Okay. Uh, because because of your because of your aid feat, mm -hmm. that will actually count as assisting Medrick. Okay. So you can participate cool. in a, and are assisted by by Silas as well as tell Medrick, no, no, wait. You should be here. <laughs> the weakest person goes in the middle. Medrick goes at the end. Because leverage, that'll help. Okay. Is everyone ready? I'm rather curious to see what the present looks like. I'm terrified. What are you talking about? So it's an athletics roll, right? Yep, so Annie and Medrick are both rolling with advantage. Uh, Medrick also has uh, your guidance. And Dudek's okay. just rolling on his own. Oh, not 20 from Dudek. That's not 20. Hey. Oh, wow. How did 25 Medrick do? plus. 25. Plus 1d4, I'll just. That's a 20 and an 8. <laughs> Uh, so 21 for total. Well, that turned out really well. <laughs> so two natural 20s Wait. and a 28. Yeah, natural 19. So yeah, pretty doggone good. Oh. So with Annie's instruction kind of getting everybody in line, with Dudek's determination and Countdown. with Medric, <laughs> Medric uh, trying to draw upon the power yeah. of Ignis, once again, you see the, 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 the symbol of Ignis itself light up almost into a flare when you do this almost as and you feel kind of warmth all over uh, whoever's next to, to medrick will also kind of feel medrick's body temperature rise a little bit and little nimbus of flame rolling around him considering that dudek is the, is the bookish type it's probably me <laughs> <laughs> um as you all give a twist and it does feel not only like it's resisting, but as though you're giving it a turn through some sort of viscous liquid or turning it through, uh, you know, wet cement, kind of that sort of feeling. Uh, the other weird sensation you get is that while you're turning this, um, and you can kind of imagine that this is a, a one of those U-shaped um, cranks so that you have you can have more than one person actually working on it is each of you feel really strange as you find yourself not just uh, continually turning, but in fact, it jumps multiple times throughout the, uh, throughout the turns in, asynchronously. So you might have your hands at the top of the, of the crank and then suddenly find your hands at the bottom of the crank. It's as though you're skipping also through time as though whatever effect that may have removed those 800 years is actually happening in proportion right now to you. 
the orrery starts to turn and twist and rapidly change now as you guys are moving through a large amount of time. It does also start to creak and groan uh, as though it's being put under a lot of strain. And at a couple of points, seems almost like it, it collapses down to a slag, the whole thing melting down into a, a, uh, a pile. But at that point, you shift just a little bit further forward and it takes shape again. Uh, and about a half a dozen times within the process of turning it to get it to the next point the compass is indicating, there are what look to be semi-stable points. So while, um, Silas, uh, you saw uh, Dudek moving the compass forward in large jumps to try to get over whatever period, it looks like there are some minor periods in there as well where some form of stability or reading from the compass might be had. How you can determine those, it's really, really hard because um, if you, you can't seem to stop once you started turning, uh, as though the orrery always wants to go to the next de destination and can never really been stopped in between. But finally, it shifts forward and presents you with a very different view of the orrery, uh, of the, the planes, if the orrery is a reflection of those right now. That um, the planes of, of Ignis, the plane of Ignis is much, much closer. Uh, not intersecting with the plane of Omatia at the moment, but uh, only a few inches away from the plane. Uh, it seems larger than it was before. Uh, it seems to be uh, th now the symbol of that is noticeably moving back and forth as if a living flame, but still made of whatever metal this seems to be made of. Uh, however, while many of those, those uh, smaller round spiked ball planes has sort of shifted up and down and around and sometimes through to the underside and sometimes coming up to the top side of Omatia, there still seems to be at least a half a dozen of them all clustered now, um, all clustered around one particular island. It looks like the island of Escus, surrounded now by a half a dozen of these symbols, half a dozen of them of varying sizes. You can see that some of the points have different features on them, but it's impossible to really tell much detail. Silas, you can also see that one of them, one of those symbols, uh, smaller than the rest and almost unnoticeable if you're not looking at the right angle, is indeed uh, a symbol representing uh, Zagwatha or the Mother Hydra. It's there. It's present. It's among the others, smaller than the rest, not quite as near as the rest are either, but still present. Far out, nearly three feet away from the center of the orrery, which is farther than you've seen anything else be represented, you still see small now, a little bit of the the uh, the wave symbol. This time, uh, it moves and stays even less as the full symbol before shrinking back down to a, a small, uh, indistinct puddle. But it's still there, far, far away, not quite completely dissected or removed or destroyed. Clustered around the edges of Omatia are some of the other major uh, gods, I think, Medrick, you are trained in religion. I'm not sure about Annie, yeah. if, if you are as well. I know Silas has said that he's not. But Medrick, you pick out easily, again, the Tandu Arch, which is still the same structure, still the same size. Of all of the things here, weirdly, the Tandu Arch has never changed. It's changed position slightly, uh, kind of forming almost what looks like a protective ring around the, uh, the, the plain of Omatia. You also see symbols for Marina and Marius. You see uh, the, uh, the sort of flowing notes of uh, Falalili. And a few others you don't recognize, but all of them seem to be uh, uh, done in a more silvery cast, whereas the spiked balls are more of a dark iron almost in flavor or in color. Uh, and in below, you do see uh, a number of different... Uh, uh, similar iron spiked balls, but there's less of them in terms of numbers, but a few of them have grown very, very large. One nearly half the size of Omatia itself that seems to be just hovering a few inches below, uh, but now almost like the rest have coalesced into a singular place. And Dudek starts to walk around uh, looking at this. Um, as he lets go of the the crank and the rest of you do as well the crank 
falls off. And you can see now that it's been worn completely through. Damn. And there is no hole in which to put a new crank. It seems as though the mechanism that was inserted to do this manually has disappeared. And Dudek walks around. I think we're stuck with it as it is now. Yeah, I don't know if Jonas can fix this one, but he can try, I'm sure. It's not meant to be, uh, he speaks somewhat distractedly as he's looking at this, it's not meant to be done via um, the hand crank. It was something I had a, a clever gnome colleague uh, uh, work up for me. It, it's going to need more power if it's going to move from this position. Uh, it's, 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 it's odd. I've never seen so an arrangement this, like this. Is that how things are right now? If what I was able to find as a stable period is, is 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 representative of the current moment, and yet yes, this must be how it looks now. But everything is focused here. Just make sure Eskis is our island, not the capital island, right? Yes. That's right. Okay. This yeah. is the this is the island you're in. Eskis is a relatively large island. Icro is the one just offshore from here. Alaria is the capital of this region. It's technically it's just it's a like kingdom. she said. Yeah. She, I wonder if she's okay. Who said what? Our uh, employer. Yes. The one who has us uh, removing a, removing evidence of the previous holder of the position uh, of, uh, I guess, God. All forces entire... cl clamoring to take that point. You know, Silas looks at the big one. Thing. It's about the size okay. of a bowling ball. No, Whereas the rest were about the size of your fist or smaller. What that one is? Is there a symbol on it? No, like the others, it's just a, a spiked uh, round ball. Uh, again, yeah. kind of reflecting what Dudek had said that they or somebody had thought it actually. I that did. They probably yeah, Annie. Um, that it's more of a character uh, characterization of a class than it is a direct symbolization. Um, um, Silas moves in and looks closer at where the one with Mother Hydra's symbol is. Is hers a spiked ball like the others, or is it something different? Because they don't have a symbol, but hers does. Um, as you look at it, 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 again, it's smaller than all the rest, about the same hovering distance above, but very distinct. Um it, it looks almost as though uh, it has uh, uh, more certainty, if you will, just as the godly ones had had as well. Um, you can make a religion check for that. If, I know you're not trained in it, but um, you might be able to come up with a good guess. Or you can discuss it with others who do have religion who might be able to take a better stab at it. I get a 15. Okay. Um. What you come up with is something along the lines of if gods have followers, one of the theories is that the followers themselves influence the shape of the god as much as the god influences the shape of the, of the followers. And the cult is a, a, a force of power to shape Mother Hydra. So maybe because it has such a concentrated following, it has elevated itself into a known element. The construction of the orrery is unknown. So you're not sure how they came up with the symbols that they're using, but that's the best that you can kind of do is that there's, there's some sort of earthly influence, which is defining it more, more clearly than the rest. But does it have like a spiky look like the other ones do? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. Well, 
kind of hate to do this, but uh, he'll use his last. Uh, oh no, he can it's by himself. Never mind. Uh, he's going to touch the mother hydro one. He's got to. Okay. He just, his hand just snakes out and touches it. Uh, if this is somehow putting him in touch with with the things they represent, then he's got to take the chance. Hopefully it doesn't boil his brain. <laughs> okay. Yes, hopefully. Uh, I will have a wisdom saving check, first of all. Twelve. Okay. Twelve! <laughs> uh, as you reach out towards it, perhaps somewhat trepidatiously and also somewhat excitedly, um, towards this clear symbol of, of Mother Hydra. No, no trepidation, just bam. <laughs> All right. Um, you put your hands upon it, and at first it's it's strange in its texture, um, as while it seems to be metal or stone, um, you feel flesh. You feel the sort of the 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 imagined the, the imagined form of Mother Hydra's skin as you would have imagined it to be. Uh, and it feels um, cool and, and moist and uh, soft in a way to the touch. Um, and then you feel yourself kind of rushing towards the symbol, not physically, but visually, as you feel yourself falling in towards it. Um, and you find yourself standing on a vast plane of swamp i done cthulhu myself <laughs> standing before you towering 30 40 feet is mother hydra who looks down at you somewhat surprised and amused her form seems to shift in the in the dim light that flows from indistinct places as the shadow that you see shaped before you, while vaguely in the shape of a woman, um, seems to not be solid around the edges. And all you're seeing is the shadowed form of her. You have come to visit, child. The voice seems to emanate from everywhere and, and run through you. Silas so will bow his head uh, with the staff out in front of Mother. I have done well to put my faith in you, child. But your presence here is not permanent, is it? No. Well, but, maybe, but probably not in a good way. I don't know. But you have found a way to reach me. This is encouraging. More. I want more. Can you do this for me? I want Molly. Can you do this for me? And there's a laugh that starts um, kind of humorously but then shifts and seems to surround you continually. Uh, and it, it feels not mocking so much as delighted and eager and uh, uh, as though it can feel through this laugh the edges of, of desire and importance and existence. You are bold, child. You will have your Molly back again when I am free. It will be done. Then go before you are consumed by my presence. And you feel yourself, a wave passes over you and shoves you backward. And all of you see Silas touch this symbol go rigid for a second, and then fall backward. Unconscious. unconscious. He seems to be not not, uh, not conscious. Do you go over and check? Yeah. <laughs> Medicine check. As you kneel down over Silas, 
you're taken aback a little bit, as his skin is green and scaly. Whoa. It fades after a second or two. But he is breathing. His skin is cold and clammy. And... 23 for medicine check. Alive. But he is breathing. I'm, I'm keeping the title of longest living human. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's fine. I can accept that. He breathes in deeply. His lips part slightly. And you can see darting out a... Uh, a long, thin, uh, green-black forked tongue. His eyes flutter open, and you can see reptilian eyes. Silas, you have returned uh, Silas, once more to this world. Your, your, your face. Da, 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 da. You can feel oh, this almost uh, alien appendage. <laughs> I Is couldn't do this before. I licked my eyebrows. Not only that, um, you find this strange sensation as you as you thrust this tongue out into the world. You can taste the world, and you believe that in time, you can learn how to use this as a sense to see, even in the darkest of places, even in places oh. where you don't have your eyes open. As you taste I, this, any medric, dudek, even the metallic burning taste of the orrery before you. My tongue recoils back into my mouth. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you still going to be able to sing your songs with that? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty good. I can do that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I try singing. Make a performance check at this advantage. Yeah. Uh, well, it's the Phoenix champion, not the Phoenix champion. <laughs> Where's my eight? <laughs> it is getting in your way right now. You feel with time you'll be able to adjust to it. You also feel like your skin is shifting slightly. And you kind of feel that the outer layer of your skin shifts as though it's not actually the surface of your body anymore. Not sure what that means. I hold it in place. <laughs> when he grabs uh, his uh, face like this, Medric, you actually yeah. see the skin shift slightly, especially around his eyes and his nose, as if it is just a mask he's wearing now. Do you want me to check that out? What did you do? I touched the thing and I spoke to Mother Hydra. I mean, it was the only logical thing to do. Hold that thought. Then uh, Silas, <laughs> Silas boops Medric's snoot with the tip of his tongue. <laughs> like Make sweet. an attack roll. Make an attack roll with disadvantage. Uh, let's see. Something here that has an attack roll. Uh, so Magic Stone is what the closest I got. We had an 18, I think. Uh, with disadvantage, so it'll be the 16. Oh, 16. Actually, it's uh, probably lower than that because it wouldn't have a proficiency, so like 13 or something. Uh, well, it, you you do have proficiency in this particular attack. Uh, Medric, uh, what yeah. is your AC? Uh, I'm oh, assuming I don't have to show that, but it's at least 17. 17? Okay. Yeah. It, it barely misses your nose, <laughs> and you actually can feel a little drop come from the end of the uh, tongue. As Silas, you see a little bit of greenish uh, poison emit from the end of your tongue. It doesn't uh -oh. affect them because it only kind of splashes against the surface. But you realize that you actually have a poison tongue. You're not sure what the oh, range dear. is, but that was several feet. Um, Whoa. I'm going to take that back in. Um, okay, things have gotten really weird. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> Tell me about well, it. You, you, it. Says so do that from the other side of the room. The mother Hydra. You, you touched the mother Hydra sphere or whichever one that was. There's one that has her symbol on it. And and you got. I. Were you able to talk to her? Yes. I was in a huge swamp, and she was towering over me. 
and we only talked for a few seconds, but then I was pulled back and 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 now wait a second <laughs> my tongue comes out over my shoulder i think i can almost strum my guitar from here <laughs> silas seems really out of it it's it's very very awkward but you your, can your sort of direct is, it your your face is like moving on your own face FYI. which one did it, you say you touched it felt that way uh it looks like Silas will that. roughly point in the direction of it, which is just roughly in the direction of the machine. Okay. Uh, um, is my face coming off? It doesn't that... feel like it is, but it looks like it's moving a bit. Uh, Annie and Medrick and Dudek as well. You all look at the orrery where roughly where he's pointed. Mm -hmm. All you see beyond the godly symbols are round stone and metal balls with spikes on them. There is none with the symbol of Mother Hydra that you can see. Silas, you, was... see it. you see it there. Oh. Let me try I walk over and I don't touch it again. I make sure not to touch it again. I, say, I see it right here, and I put my finger like two inches away. It's one of the smaller balls, but it is a, definitely a ball with spikes on it from everybody else's perspective. Mm -hmm. Silas, again, you see it specifically as Mother Hydra's symbol. Nice. I'll walk closer it's to the like orrery. All the others. I'll point to the one for Ignis. Do you guys see a symbol on that one? You see it. Yeah. And actually, everybody sees the 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 small the flame growing off it as well. It's been doing yeah. that for a while. Figured figured that one out a while ago. I'll put my hand closer to it and closer and gently touch it. No, it's it's on fire. You can feel the flame. It does not harm you. If anything, it feels comforting. Okay, cool. I touched two of these, and both of them, well, one of them tried to murder me, and the other one seems to have taken my face. You touch one, and you just feel kind of nice? I think I get the better of the two, actually. Although I, I might I suggest that no one touch any more until we have some yes. chance to study this. Absolutely. If I anything, this anymore, happening to you makes me feel more comfortable because you won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll gently remove my hand. Uh, okay. I'm going to see about removing the compass. All right. I'm going to actually, back I'll, away. Yeah, I'll, actually, yeah. Actually, we might want to do this after because uh, we do have to have uh, a break. We got three minutes left, and I get a run off in a second there for a minute. All right, so we will convene uh, for the moment. We'll be back in a few more minutes um, for the next time, which probably is going to be our last. We'll see how much uh, we've gotten, but uh, it's been rather fun with the orrery, so it might be yeah. a while. We'll be back in approximately five minutes. And I believe we are back to the stream. Thank you again for sticking with us. All right, in this exciting moment, when Silas has just touched something magical after telling us not to touch it <laughs> i yeah look you get one chance to touch your god you gotta take it i mean medrick did too his just didn't do anything weird it's the fact uh, that you told us not to touch thing. it <laughs> Yes. As you start well, to approach the orrery to take the compass out, Dudek kind of quickly comes around. Uh, maybe I should. Uh, maybe you should stay uh, yes. back from uh, this. I, yeah, something I was going to do before we cut, uh, cut off was I was going to call him over to make sure that uh, it gets yeah, taken looks, out. He just wants to make sure it's out. Uh, he looks rather nervously at you uh, as he's kind of turning around and... He, he has to have his back to you in order to reach in and take the compass, but you can see he's kind of nervous about that because whatever just happened was very weird. Um, I'll put myself in between Silas and him. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you facing Silas or are you facing uh, uh, his I'm, back? I'm in between. Okay. Face, face. <laughs> they they yeah. are on either side of me. She can tell that Silas is resisting the urge, urge to just reach out and tap the guy on the shoulder I've I've already had to keep Silas away from things, <laughs> and he seems uncomfortable. Right. So. No, and Silas will back off. I mean, if the guy's obviously uncomfortable, he doesn't want to make him uh, any worse. 
All right. So he bends to trying to remove the compass. Now, he removed it before without too much difficulty. But now you can hear him swearing as it seems to be more difficult. Uh, he is going to try, however. A uh, total of 20. Oh, nice. Uh, it yeah, does seem it. to take... I have a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> well, no it, crowbarring my, my it, it almost <laughs> comes to that, in fact, as he starts to pull out a tool uh, and, and kind of lever it in. There is a loud, somewhat unnerving sound of metal bending and uh, a, a loud pa-ping as something definitely did not want to let loose from the compass. Uh, but he does manage to pull it free. Um the orrery sits, you can see that it's it's uh, kind of probably as much Medric more than a Medric and Dudek would notice, uh, is that when he pulls the compass free of the orrery, it, it seems to almost sag a little bit, almost as though something central to its being has been pulled out, which would be an accurate description yeah. perhaps. Uh, but it, it seems diminished somewhat, and there was definitely a loud pang, something was uh, kind of holding on to the inside of the compass somehow. When he pulls out the compass, Medric, you actually notice that there there was some sort of thin metal shim that was uh, almost stuck in through the back part of the compass, and that's what kind of pulled free. Um, Dudek looks somewhat concerned. That's, I don't think it's supposed to do that. I don't know what that means. It 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 might have been pushed to its limits, or it, it might have. I, I really don't know. This is a bit outside of my experience. Um, However, I, I am going to do the same thing as I did the other time. I'm going to take note of where things are. Okay. Um, there are fewer of the things this time, um, and, uh, make a perception check. 10. 10? You're not entirely sure, but you think this Ow. small one, you also apparently touched one of the spikes <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> wild cat sure. appears. Failed her jump and like clawed on my leg to like See, succeed. <laughs> natural ones are a thing that happen in real life, and even cats. <laughs> uh, as strange aeons may fly, so may cats make, make negative ones. Um, you're pretty sure that you've narrowed it down to four of the different ones. Was the one that Silas had touched, but you can't tell the difference between them. To you, they all look the same. Uh, so in your notes, you will be able to see that you think one of these four is the one that Silas had touched that he claimed was had the symbol of Mother Hydra, but you can't see it. Uh, uh, Silas will get the compass back. Well, Dudek is looking it over right now, uh, yeah. kind of carefully ex examining it. You can see as he turns it over in his hands, the back is warped slightly. Uh, and there is a hole where that piece of metal had been stuck through. Um, you weren't able, you didn't examine the compass when it was in the device, but you get the, get the feeling kind of from the sound of it that it kind of opens up a little bit into the device when placed in there. So there is yeah. a physical connection made, and for whatever reason, the connection was not cleanly uh, separated this time. Uh, but he's kind of looking it over. Uh, and kind of looks up at you, uh, and he seems reluctant to hand over the compass. Well, I, Silas uh, will uh, silently insist. You can make an intimidation roll if you want. No, he's just hoping he'll give him back his thing. I, I think I'd like to study this more closely. And if the orrery can be reactivated uh, through whatever mechanism, whatever power source, I'd like to probe a few more times. Well, for one, I don't think that would be a good thing to do by yourself. And for the other, you'll just have to keep in touch with us. I don't mind doing experiments with it, but I don't want to let it uh, 
out of my sight. This artifact belongs here, in this place, with the rest of... The artifact of... belongs to me. And Silas uh, not so subtly shows off the ring that connects him to it. As this is your place, that is my compass. I am happy to work with you, but I will have to take that with us. We may need it. If we stumble upon any more uh, words, fuck, any more establishments that once belonged to the Argenti Sagex, we might need it to access certain things. But if we do find any areas like that, we'll, we'll let you know. You can easily see the, the uncertainty on Dudek's face. Some fear as he directs it towards Silas as well. Um, Annie, what is your position on this? As he kind of looks to you as well to see what you what you might have to say. I have the same feeling as when I refuse to give Silas the book. Okay. Of, I trust Silas the person. I don't trust his motivations behind this choice. Because last time he was this possessive of something along the, uh, part of the set was that book, and he was just as persistent. Okay, how does that uh, how does that come about verbally? Do you intercede? Do you speak on one side or the other? You can see the pleading in Dudek's face as he's hoping that you will side with him. I wonder if we can get Jonas to make us a copy. Okay. That that helps a little bit. I don't think I don't think Jonas can. These artifacts are beyond most mortal creations now. It would have taken decades to build such a thing by the ex experts who constructed them the first time. I I agree with both of your points of view, Silas that it belongs to you even though you found it in a cave a week ago and have become strangely possessive of this. Two weeks ago. Uh, and the the book that I'm even less inclined to let you even touch now uh, because of this reaction. But I do think that it does need to be researched. I think that you don't know how to use it. He has a general idea of how to use it and can give us more information by getting the time to observe it more. Hmm. Either way, it seems like you'd have shared custody of the compass. My life's work has been I... leading up to this artifact. And now it's proven not only genuine, but to show what the world is set to now. Kitty tail. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I had something before people started speaking, and then the cat wandered across. It was like, kitty. <laughs> um, perhaps you are right. If, if I, you can keep it for now to research, but I have need of your help in return. I still... I still consider that the ring chose you for a reason. Those two are artifacts beyond my current ken, but I see you are conflicted. I... I will help you if I can, but I too am conflicted. Silas will look at, at uh, 
Something went bong. It's over an here. elevator? I don't know why. Um, <laughs> an elevator appears by the side of the room. Oh, sorry, wrong yeah. floor. Closes and disappears. <laughs> um, there's only... He looks over at, uh, at Annie and says, there's only one reason I have need of these items. When we, when we fought the things in the haunted house, I don't think that the three beings we saw, our patron and Molly and the guard, I don't think they were, well, I don't think all of them were dead. I think that perhaps the guard was, but Molly and Catherine, I think, are missing somewhere. Until we search Catherine's place, I can't be sure, but I don't think Molly is dead. I think she is gone. And my only hope is to get my family back. And he looks at uh, Dudik. You have books here of other realms and portals and other things. I need your help finding where she is and finding a way to bring her back. For that, you can keep the compass. If I can assist with this, I have no problem. I. But where do I start? I don't know. That makes it harder. Wherever, if Catherine was somehow captured in the haunted house, she was taken from her place. After we're done with the castle, with the things that are going on there, I'm going to I'm going to travel back to the to Catherine's temple and see if she's there. If she is, then I am wrong. And I have nowhere else to go. If she is gone, then we have lost our patron and uh, may need to find them. Either way, I'm not certain that what we were doing before working for Catherine is the right thing. Well, it seems that whatever information was removed is can't be recovered. Mission accomplished no. by doing nothing. But he looks over at the, the spiky orbs. It's like there are things that we must fight here regardless. Uh, does he still see the Mother Hydra one there? Yes. He walks over and says, you see this as a spiked orb like the others. Do you? Yeah. Yes. Annie, you now I know truly which do one not. it is. Sorry? Annie now knows specifically which one it was because you, she wasn't it. certain before, yep. but uh, mm -hmm. you've pointed it out directly. Yep. Um, he looks over at Dudag and says, is, is this device perception based? Perhaps because I do not see Mother Hydra the way they think of her. I see it different. Or maybe because I have a connection, but, but we, all see the, Ignis. we all see the Ignis one the same as Medrick does. Although, I mean, we all see Ignis the same way as Medrick does normally, I think. But um, There is much about the Orrery which I do not yet understand. 
much of what it had been, much of how it was created and its purposes have been lost. Uh, I had assumed that it was physical in nature, that it was truly here and indisputable. But its, its ability to shift through the time and be a reflection of it um, casts that into some doubt. It is, imp it is possible that it is both, um, that it is physically shifting and changing as we know it. But because of your unique connection, you can read it in a way that we cannot. It would be as though it were written in a language that the rest do not understand, that looks nothing more than lines and scratches, but you can see the words in it. That would be one way to think about it, I think. As for why we see Ignis or Tandu or Falalili, they are established, they are constant, they are... Um, they exist as this world exists. All those others are untethered to this world, uh, may be tethered to another plane of the material. There are numerous theories about there being multiple material planes, each one a locus point for uh, an existence as we would understand it, and that all of the other planes are um, relative to them or somehow existing in relative stasis between... You can kind of sense that he's he's pulling on academic knowledge now to try to understand, and it's getting a little bit more and more academic, and you can hear him starting to quote different books. And there was a theorist who, who lived uh, 100 years ago, well, 900 years ago now, an elf with a rather brilliant idea that that there existed multiple planes all parallel in the same place, but I, I was never able to reconcile that with um, Carolinus's book about uh, about the dream realm and how that pervaded. And again, it kind of gets into this academic lecture, which quickly becomes difficult to understand. As if you ever listen to an academic kind of spin off, and suddenly it turns into this person's theory. There's no explanation of the theory, just the name given. Oh, Medric is just smiling and nodding. Yeah, cool. Uh, I, I think we we get it. You're still figuring it out. I, I do have one question, Silas. Yes? When you see Mother Hydra's symbol, is it in the same material itself? Or is it uh, as the spikes? Or is it as the same in the same material as the established gods? That would be a question for Mark. <laughs> you felt a very distinctly different surface oh, yeah. texture and, and presence it felt, from it. Yes, but what does he see? It reflects what you felt. Okay, so it does it look like same. a scaly yep. skin. Yep. When I look at it, it is neither. It is the, the scaled skin of Mother Hydra. There are no spikes. There is no metal. When I touched it, it felt as though I was touching someone with skin like that. Uh, hmm. Perhaps some tea. That might be a good idea. Yeah. Silas will have some this time. And it leads you all over kind of to the other side of this this space where the big roaring fire is 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 down a bit, but he throws some extra wood on the fire, um, busies himself with with uh, putting the pot back over to boil the water. Um, you kind of get this sense of routine and intention for relaxation, but he is distracted and drops a couple of things a couple of times um, and uh, but builds up a fire. Very soon, you can smell. Um, this time, it smells like a sweet tea that he's put on. Um, there's almost a hint of raspberry. Um, Silas is also going to uh, use disguise self to make himself look completely normal. Uh, it won't affect the tongue if it comes out, but it'll presume it'll hopefully make his skin look normal. 
Okay. Uh, so it's yeah, very less uh, less disturbing to the <clears throat> others. And uh, are you hiding that the casting, or or and we're doing it casually, or trying to do it so that everybody knows where? He would do it. He would do it subtly. He doesn't want to bring uh, attention uh, to it. Okay. He's just trying to make sure that people aren't being uh, disturbed by his appearance. Okay. Um, I'll have Annie and Medrick both make perception checks. No. Okay. A four. 23. 23. For My you, metal Annie, dice has forsaken me. <laughs> it's finally run into point <laughs> corners. Um, for you, Annie, um, Silas is looking better. It must have been a temporary effect that happened to him. Uh, you know, his, his face doesn't seem to have that same sort of slack again. Uh, even his eyes seem to return somewhat more closer to normal. Although his eyes were a little weird to begin with before, but um, at least it seems like that's that's faded. Um, for you, Medric, um, it's unnerving in a way that he looks absolutely normal, like perfectly normal. You know that they were you guys were in a fight. There were some were some blood going back and forth. There were some some uh, nasty wounds and things like that. And he looks perfectly fine, completely and utterly perfectly fine, way too fine. It feels a little unnerving to you. It feels like fake fine, yeah. <laughs> it kind of feels like fake fine. But I'm just wondering, like, I don't say anything. Like, I'll give him the side eye briefly, but <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, uh, that's going to affect him, like, at, at his performance at the party. <laughs> Well, and, and before the party is the big performance as well. Yeah, that's what I mean, that one. Yeah. Silas, um, what have you done? <laughs> you're yeah, that's why I'm a master of illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Wait. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after a few minutes, um, Dudek uh, serves each of you. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reddish tea. Uh, very much has that sort of uh, distinct berry sourness of raspberry or the equivalent, the omation equivalent of raspberry. Uh, and uh, he hands it all to each to you and takes a big swig before even sitting down. Uh, <laughs> and you can see him kind of uh, uh, visibly kind of enjoying the ritual of it, uh, but then kind of sits back heavily. Um, he's taken the compass and kind of put it into a, uh, a vest side pocket, essentially, so it sticks out a little bit because it's a little bit larger than that. Uh, but that's where he's placed it. Kind of absently putting it there when he first came over and has kind of half forgotten about it. Um, so I, uh, I've encountered a lot of things I didn't understand and a lot of things that I thought I did understand today. With your grace, Silas, I will study this compass. But, uh, you can, of course, come back, um, well, sort of, when you like. The access will still be through me and through my my portal. Um, and I will endeavor to understand what might have happened to your wife. I, um, I will need more information to go on. Anything you can tell me and anything you discover... Um, I think I would like to know more from Willerth. If you could talk to him and perhaps have him come to tell you more about his his haunted house um, device that he uses. That would be helpful. Uh, well, while we're having tea for a bit, Silas will tell them uh, what he knows uh, what he's found out uh, recently, which is basically that we're not so sure he, she's dead, just that she fell into the water and no longer appeared. Uh, so I think this is the first time that most of the story is being heard by Annie and Medrick, right? Um, yeah. Yep. Some parts of it have been told to them, um, but not completely, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so he tells, sorry? Well, do you mention the dream? Because that was one other element of it, but it was a little bit stranger. I think I've forgotten the dream. The dream was essentially you were all fleeing from an island. 
Oh, oh yeah. You're the last one to leave. And then when you got out in the boat, Molly was there where she wasn't in the earlier part of the dream. Yeah. I think he will mention that, but he's not certain what it means. Uh, as at first he thought that was about his parents leaving the previous island with him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he will mention that he did have a dream about having to leave the island and Molly was there. Um, uh, and he'll tell them about, uh, well, what he learned about the trip out from his parents, uh, that they had told him that she had drowned, but when they were pressed about it, they said that a wave washed four people overboard. They rescued three and could not find Molly. So they presumed she was dead. Uh... Dudek has pulled out one of his, his uh, journals or the one he's been mostly working with. He's got a propped open on his lap and is taking notes rapidly as you talk. Um, kind of mostly listening, not really asking too many questions, um, but uh, kind of trying to take it all in. Um, when you've kind of had a chance to relate a lot of this and do, do any and Medrick have reactions immediately for this? Cause you're, you're welcome to jump in here now if you do. I'm trying to remember the dream Medrick had and I, it's in my notes somewhere, but. Um, um Aunt, Annie's going to keep her thoughts to herself cause she's very conflicted on this entire situation. Cause well, she doesn't understand exactly what he's going, what Silas is going through she understands that he wants something that can't in her opinion she, he's trying to bring the dead back or depending on what detail silas goes in uh or his patron is literally holding someone hostage and that doesn't seem like someone that she's okay with coming into the yeah world. yeah well he's Silas will make it clear he's I he does realize that that's a possibility that she has her but at the t at the previous time she talked to her that didn't seem to be the case uh he suspects Molly is somewhere else uh Molly did say that she was waiting for him to find her when they were in the haunted house um Yes, but from what I understood, that haunted house was based on our memories. Nothing, I have this ring, nothing can get into my mind. Mm -hmm. So nothing for me was accurate. Yep, but that's Every, why we... Everything uh, for me was based on your memories of being with me. Yep, that's why Silas thinks we have to go find out if Catherine still is there. Or if something has actually happened to her. Because we, l the last we saw of her in the haunted house, she fell into the interdimensional space. Um, so if we go to her place and she's not there, then there may be more reality to that uh, dimensional space than we thought there was. Um, so I found the, the summary with the dreams. Um, to summarize Medrick's dream, it was uh, you on board a uh, ship with a number of other soldiers. Uh, to very, uh, you were you remembered the notion of it being in capitals most important battle. Um, there had been fighting for a while, and then a cry. Uh, then so you had been fighting for a while. Then the ship was taking you to another island. A cry went up, and a great mighty set of waves washed over the ship, capsizing it. Um, but you washed up on the shore of another island. The battle cry went up and the battle was on again. So that was the essence of it. There's okay. more to it, but that was the essence of you of your dream, is remembering that you had been capsized for a moment, uh, but had managed to continue on the battle. Okay. Um, all three of you make a... Let's call it a history check. No. Oh. Hey, 18. With the minus it's one. a weird use in this game, but it kind of is the most appropriate one. Eight. Eight. Uh, that is a 16. 
16. Okay. Silas, you're already caught up in kind of the memory of this dream and everything that flows around Molly. There's lots of emotions, and you're kind of not able to make too many leaps at the moment. Annie and Medrick, though, you're kind of removed a little bit from the situation, and as the, the, the memories of these dreams come up, it occurs to both of you kind of simultaneously um, that what Dudek was talking about earlier um, and what you had witnessed in the orrery was not that it had shifted as you were cranking it over immediately from one point to another, but actually shifted through points in time. And multiple points in time had been stable. So what you had experienced as a dream, theoretically, in this moment, the insight takes you that that might have been another stable moment. And that's why you can remember some details from it. And then there may be more. So our dreams were like possibly stable points in time even? They might be memories, not dreams. Okay. Or dreams somehow allowing allowed to access bits and times of your memories and reconstruct them as best it could. So our dreams could be, our memories could be stored inside our dreams, basically. If you figure out how to access them, maybe. And just like the dreamlike scape, as you're kind of talking about the, the haunted house, just like the dreamlike scape that was in there might have more reality to it, maybe these dreams and memories also have more reality to them. What that means ultimately, lots to discover, but it kind of occurs to you as you're thinking about this. The weirdness of remembering forgetting. Yeah. Precisely. People with ADHD know that feeling way too well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, as, as it kind of ended up happening, when I named this campaign The Great Confusion, it was more real than I actually realized. So, yes, I, I kind of understand this a little bit. Um, so, Dudek kind of asks you a few questions along the lines, and you can kind of feel like these narrowing in details. Um, when you kind of relay the dream that you had where you were fleeing away. He writes down some specific notes and asks if there's anything in particular you remember about that. And there were a few little details about the fact that you, that uh, your people had burned their village before leaving and kind of as a spiteful last gesture that they would leave nothing of, of value to anyone who was there. Uh, and even the shoreline, you dig out a few details, but nothing terribly uh, uh, illustrative to you. Um, but you get the sense that he's he's picking out little details he can research, I try to figure out maybe where that was, or um, when that was, or if anything else kind of comes to it. Um, but after a while, the, the tea is very calming. It's nice and warm from within. You get that little bit of, of bitterness on the tongue, which which kind of lingers for a little while longer, and, and all feel kind of calm and peaceful. Medrick? Hmm? Oh, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, really sorry. ADHD. Ooh, it'll come uh, yeah, back. well, it happens to me too, which is why I kind of want to get my thought out before I oh, get right. too far. I mean, it, but, was, it was just going to be a silly comment, like, "Well, we, the time point we've we've narrowed that down to to eight hundred and three years." So yeah, you know, it, it went <laughs> from easy. sometime recently to sometime in the last two years to sometime in the last eight hundred years. So <laughs> technically, you're narrowing it down. It's just getting bigger as you narrow it down. Um. Dudek kind of sits up suddenly. Oh, it's... It's been a while. We should get back. We might be missed. Uh, I have a... Uh, I have a somewhat disturbing feeling that our playing around with the orrery itself um, may have lengthened time in our experience. It's only a passing theory, but I don't have any clocks here for a reason. I guess we'll find out when we get back to the carnival. Yeah. yeah. Um, About the compass, if you take it anywhere with you, can you let us know where it is? Just so we can make sure you're you know, still alive, basically. Like, as in, keep uh, in touch. The compass is not going to leave my side. It's far too Good. valuable for that. And while this place is protected against... Some things like scrying and other prying eyes. 
It's and its physical location is a little difficult to get to, even if you're on the island. It, uh, well, I do know there are people looking for it. So while there are some things of value that I leave here, this compass will not be one of them. Besides, if I left the compass here and the orrery is here, they might very well activate it again. And that might be problematic. But I've kept you far too long. Um, Do you mind if I borrow a few books that I saw here? No, by all means. They're in a variety of languages, and sometimes the authors were not exactly stable. Uh, but if you can make sense of some of them, I would love to hear what you have to uh, to divine. I myself have read about 500 of them, um, well, directly, skimmed another 500 to 600 of them, and the remaining two or 300 are um, on my to-be-read pile. But are there particular books of interest to you? Just ones that may help us figure this out. I'd like to do some research. Certainly. And uh, I will do mine as well, and we can compare notes. There's much to be learned here. I do not know how long we have. The proximity of those additional planes is um, concerning. Yes. We should well, get going. Yes. At least the plane of the Ignis symbol was somewhat near. I like that. You always like it when stuff burns. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Silas will grab that, uh, the book that he had and uh, just look around for sort of a general primer on other dimensional entities. Okay. Um, if you show the book that uh, you picked up to Dudek, mm -hmm. um, he will kind of raise an eyebrow. That's a little bit advanced, perhaps, what you're looking for, but uh, understandably interesting. I've only been able to understand about half of it myself, and the other half is uh, also on my to-be-read pile. Um, maybe this one and this scroll should be of interest to you, and... Uh, Possibly these books. What's your background in extra-dimensional or planar logistics? And he asks you kind of Minimal. to help direct him. Uh, he hands you about uh, six books, four scrolls. This should get you started, it's, but... Uh, Interdimensional physics for dummies. <laughs> more or less. Um, I tell him that language doesn't matter. Oh, well, that's definitely interesting. I haven't learned that trick myself, but I have... Um, an item which helps me with that. Granted, knowing what something is saying and understanding it are, well, quite a distance apart. Also, many mm. of these writers, I think, had gone insane by the time they had started writing these, or sometime during the middle of them. From what little we saw of the other stone-covered book, I think you're probably right. Ah, yes, <laughs> this stone-covered book. Would it be possible to take a look at that? Do you have it with you? I don't. Ah. I... Silas had a very similar reaction to the compass, uh, to the book, so I decided to keep it away from Silas. Mm, understandable. Uh, I allowed that uh, it makes sense that I wasn't going to be reading it anytime soon. Uh, so I, I've kept it hidden, uh, but I can definitely get that so you can take a look at it. If I've been in uh, anywhere near her room in the past like week, I tell him where it is in the room because he can feel it. <laughs> uh, Actually, it shouldn't be a problem. He can probably feel it anyways. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, where has Annie stashed it for the the the? The players and GM knowledge, not for character knowledge. Mm. Um, I, the player, don't know, but I think I rolled like a 22 to hide it. Mm. Yeah, it was just somewhere <laughs> in the room. Yeah. Uh, and that was the intention, somewhere in the room back at yeah. the uh, Three Bells? Okay. Yeah. You hit it well, so I... well that you can't find it in yourself anymore. <laughs> it's so well that it's in another building somehow. <laughs> okay. Um. 
Well, if, if it were possible, I'd like to see that book. I'm curious as to who was the original owner of the ring. It might give some might give some notion as to why the compass reacted as it did, or or when it was... I don't know. It might be telling me something useful. And you can kind of sense an exasperation of, of like, he's normally got a pretty good academic front. He, you know, he's a professor. He, he's good at, good at presenting. He's reached the end of his rope for the day, where he's mm -hmm. kind of like, ah, screw it. <laughs> got to learn something somehow, some way, over dinner. Um, and he, uh, he, after, you know, bundling up, uh, Silas with these books, they are in a number of different languages. Um, there's even one that's written in Orcish, strangely enough. It's the weirdest book to read, uh, as it's actually, uh, uh, the, the scroll is wrapped around a center of stone, which is carved. And in order to read the paper, you have to also simultaneously read the stone. <laughs> what? And he does kind of explain. Uh, Medrick, you do understand Orcish, right? You do. You actually yeah. came from the Orcish lands. Yeah, this is a very old technique. And to you, it mimics the um, the spines. At the center of the Orkdana, there are these massive uh, stone pillars. Uh, when I say massive, they're several hundred feet tall. And each of them is a, is a carved history of, of, uh, of, of the Orcs. Uh, and it is the task of a lifetime to actually contribute to those. Um, orcs have been known to die in the process because they have to climb them up to wow. 800, 900 feet tall to carve, to hang off the side of this rock and carve in the new sets of knowledge that have been gleaned by the, by the leaders. Uh, and it kind of resembles that in miniature. Um, it, you do kind of get the impression that no one except an orc should have this. This is practic This is practically like the the personal diary of uh, an, an orc uh, a leader. Dudek doesn't seem uh, to notice that part, but you kind of have that weird sense of oh shit. <laughs> where did that one come from? It's like someone had the original, uh, uh, you know, the original uh, scrolls of 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 Jesus or something, uh, <laughs> and and it was, you know, somebody that shouldn't have them. A complete atheist is holding onto these things for some reason. Um, money yeah, beside them, yeah. Um, they were um, a gift uh, from a very trusted friend. Insight check. <laughs> All right. You're a master of insight now. Ha <laughs> That's true. <laughs> What's the bonus again? I think you have a plus nine. Yeah. I think so. Well, dirty 20. Nice. Um, he's not strictly lying, but he's definitely leaving a lot out of the story. But he obviously isn't really keen to tell it either. Yeah. Uh, I can read that for you, Silas, if you want. Uh, if you want to read it, go ahead. Uh, I can read it uh, myself, fine. I got magic for that. Yeah, you kind of realize that to put your use of the Comprehend languages together with that one... You've got to be simultaneously tracing down not only the scroll, but the, the stone at the same time in order to understand it. It's going to be probably more complicated than you used to, but possible. Mm. Um, well, Silas doesn't know any of that, so he'll stuff it in his bag. <laughs> and those are my only copies, so please be careful with them. Um, I, I Do you wish to do research as well, Medric? Any, I... I'm not sure if you also can understand whatever languages there are, but there are a large number of, of books here on a variety of topics, although obviously focused on on the plains primarily. Do you have any about Ignis? Oh, of course, of course. Um, I wouldn't, and he kind of does a double take to you, uh, and you get the impression it's like sort of like he want, he's getting a little defensive. Not Nothing, of course, that's private to the temple, of course, uh, those books are, are well-guarded secrets, but uh, I have scholarly books about Ignis and some descriptions of some of the extraplanar travelers who've gone, supposedly, to Ignis's own home realm. If that's of interest. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's have a look at that one. Okay. I speak yeah. common and orcish. Okay. 
he does pull out a a a, a book, um, which it it's heavy, and then you realize that it is not just rock. This is actually uh, essentially uh, lava glass, which is the cover of the book, and each page is made out of something heavier than paper. Um, you get the impression the entire book is fireproof. This is about the only real book I have other than some academic mentions in different directions, but this would be a good starting reading for you anyway. I found it interesting. Nice. And the book is actually warm to the touch. Uh, and um, you, you, Annie, you want to look into that other name for Alaria, but... I am going to actually... I saw books that I recognized. Um, I would like to go see if there are any older editions of books that I recognized about history and politics. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check with advantage because Dudek will help you. It's not something he particularly was interested in, so we haven't really cataloged that, but he might have run across a few. I'm taking a picture of this because this is my third nat 20 of the night. <laughs> <laughs> is this the metal dice again? No, it's not. I oh. just grabbed a die. So the luck is yours, not the dies. Um, well then, um, you actually find another edition of the book that um, uh, I have her name here somewhere. Not is it Esri or yeah, Esri was the 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 girl who was reading the book, not Enri. Uh, you find another edition of that book, and it seems like a larger version of that book, as if the one that she had was the the expurgated version or the uh, the somewhat abbreviated version that purports to be uh, the history of Alaria. And in fact, you see that it says the history of Alaria and, sorry, what was the other name I gave? I lost that Astaria. one. Uh, Astaria. Astaria. Uh, that name is actually in the title. Oh, look at that. It's written in a crabbed hand. It's going to be hard to read not just because the language itself is older, but just because it's written by hand and the person writing it had this spidery, uh, overly florid handwriting and apparently wanted to fit as many words in this book as possible, so they're extraordinarily small. Um, uh, we get eight, eight minutes, minutes. Uh, and I get to run off for a minute. I get to... I'll be okay. back, but uh, you guys might be closing it by then. So we might. Uh, well, I think we're going to come to a conclusion. I think at the, for the evening here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Silas is pretty quiet the rest of the time. So. Okay. Well, uh, I think that we're going to. Uh, 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 that was one book that you found. Was there another book or another direction you wanted to research? Um, I'm I'm looking the uh, on the history aspect of uh, of it, so that would probably be a good starting point. Um, if there's anything else that I would recognize that might be useful from what, because basically I'm using the stuff that I know, recognize and seeing what might be helpful. Okay. Um. Make another roll again with advantage because he's helping you. Uh, that's a thirteen and a uh one. So that is fourteen. Okay. Um. Let me just see here. Oops. Uh, what is, no, I just found it. Okay. Um, you find, uh, a book that looks to be a diary perhaps. Um, although it's undated except for uh, kind of relative dates at the, at the tops of the pages, half of it is burned away. And it's a very small book. We're talking only a few inches on a side. Um, but what stands out to you, to you on, the, on the cover, well, not even on the cover, on the inside page, 
Um, first of all, actually, sorry, on the cover, there is a, something that stands out to you. It is a very familiar curled rose symbol. And as you open it up, it is the thoughts, uh, thoughts, memories, and hopes of Felicia Montrose. Aged 10. As I see. You flip, as you flip through that book, you notice that the back half of the book has been burned away. You also notice that it probably was torn out as well, because uh, there's only stubs left that were kind of burned. Um, and just flipping through the book, you see that it's written in more than one handwriting. A few of the entries you read just seems like the innocuous goings on of some some young uh, girl. But every once in a while, you hit upon a few words that seem out of place. You have a sense that this book was written in code. Hmm. Looks like we all got some research to do. But damn it, it's party week. Ah. <laughs> and we don't know what time it is in real world. Sounds like university. <laughs> <laughs> Lots in research, have parties to go to, and haven't got any time idea what time it is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> this is exactly like university. Well, um, uh, Dudek does say that he will be m part of the time still back at the museum, um, conducting readings and tours and so forth, um, but he's also going to be spending some time here. Um, if you have magical means to get in touch with him, let it, then by all means do so. If there are additional areas of research, you can let him know. Basically, for the players, you can ask Dudek to do research, or you can ask him to find books and do your own research. Cool. Um, research takes about a week at a time, so this is not a fast thing. Um, but he uh, he leads you out towards the outer si outside once again, kind of redonning his coat. He kind of just left it off because if he was in here lead you back outside and again kind of indistinguishable in many ways from the side uh, of the rock um, he points you at where the entrance is here uh, and it is a stone arch that's carved into a solid uh, block of stone and he points out some of the features if you find another doorway it will look something like this um, okay. They are entranceways that can be reached remotely. It has no effect on this side. For that, you need this. And he, once again, reaches into his pocket and pulls out the doorknob he'd used before. Um, this will operate on certain um, prepared doors. Um, but if you see another portal like that, that's what I'm looking for. And then leads you back inside to an innocuous door. It just looks like every other door. He does point out some of the features around it. There are carved runes on the outside. Basically, that attunes it with the uh, with the uh, the doorknob itself. He reaches out, puts the doorknob in the door, turns it, and then opens it up. And you can see now the inside of his uh, tent, his tent office, uh, where he was working, or sorry, the upper floor of the museum where he had his temporary office. Follow me. And as he goes through, he pulls the doorknob out, which leaves the door open for the rest of you. Do you follow through? Yep. Yep. One yep. minute. Uh, and then he closes the door before behind you, and it once again becomes the back of his uh, his closet, essentially. Now, it has been a very interesting evening, and I look forward to talking to you more. But for now, and he kind of uh, looks over to the clock on, on the mantelpiece, for now, it's time to get some rest. And you can see that it's about 1 a.m. You went in here in the early evening. So it's been more, it's about twice as much time has passed. Um, also, each of you make a wisdom saving throw. And Silas, you make it with advantage. Natural one. Had to make up for the three natural 20s. <laughs> By now, you may be also feel, feeling another effect of these portals. 21. I'm sorry for this. But it is necessary. You got a what, sorry? 20? 21. 21? I get 18. About to end. Natural one. Um, Annie's seconds. the only one who ends up feeling the effect. 
as the call is about to end, you forget the location of the... <laughs> oh no! <it> Close. <laughs> That's all because Annie failed her saving throw. Jeez. That's hilarious. It's come, I should have almost <laughs> ended it there and just said, "You forget." But ah. No. Um, well, now I don't have to quite rush, but I do want to explain. I'm not going to fix the screen for now. So if you're wondering, no uh, sorry. Um, I'm Silas now. Uh, yeah. So for Silas and Medric, both of you feel the pressure of magic wheeling on on you. Um, Medric, uh, Silas, you feel the the ring itself sort of pushing back against that magic and against your recent thoughts. Uh, Silas, you or sorry, Medric, because you're in the wrong places. I'm looking at you. I'm the <laughs> wrong um, Medric, you feel actually a little bit of fire burn up inside of you, and it may be because you touched the fire of Vignus within that it's protected you at least for now against this magic. But Annie, mm -hmm. you do not recall what island you were on. You could not name it, even if you tried. In fact, you're pretty sure if you looked at a map you wouldn't be able to recall the name. You feel that information draining away from you. As, uh, as uh, Dudek explains, I'm sorry, but for its own protection, one of the enchantments of the library is to make people forget about it. You may experience this over the next day, or it may have just happened to you. I apologize, but there is no other way to be safer. I think you wrote notes. You're good. And as you look at your notes, you pop open the book, and as, he, as uh, Medrick says that, every time you look across and you write across anything, if you wrote it down, of the name of the place, it's blank for you. I if see. You show, if you show it to someone else, it also appears blank to them. Except Damn. for Silas and Medrick, who see it quite clearly. Okay. I, so I didn't, I wouldn't have written the name of the island. I was just basically drawing the sure. the thing so but you do find this weird void in your memory because you kind of remember but you can't remember if it was on a shoreline or up in the hills or down in a valley or completely underground you can't remember it at all now Silas points to the map it was here and you look down his fingers blurred out <laughs> kind of yeah, it, it, yeah and actually that is the, the effect that seems to happen is Annie you are actually not only forgetting it you're actively prevented from remembering it. You're, you're being censored. Essentially. It's okay. We, we can see it. We can copy it and show you again. She won't remember. Damn. The effect is quite permanent. I hate people messing with my minds. It's why I don't magic. It's a bit of fame magic we were able to um, bargain for, I think. Trust me, it was the most embarrassing thing the first few times I went through the door myself, but I found over time, repeated visits do seem to lessen the effect. I see. And I'm assuming we'll return at some point. I sincerely hope so. And he kind of pats his pocket where you know the the uh, the compass is just slightly pointing, uh, peeking out of. I look forward to working with you. And seeing where this goes. Good luck. You too. And by now you leave the museum. It is all dark. It was closed up hours ago. In fact, there are still revelers out, and the circus party seems to go quite late into the night. But it is that, that eerie feeling that while you were on the shore... Well, Andy doesn't remember, but the rest of you remember while you were on the shore walking outside, you could see the moon still kind of, uh, one of the moons still hanging on the horizon, but now it is far overhead and the sky is dark. Time moves very strangely at the old library. Now you go your own ways and we'll wrap up for tonight. We'll catch up with you folks in two more weeks. It'll be the uh, 21st of November. We'll be playing again. Thank you for watching. If you watched... Uh, via YouTube, you've gotten the full experience all at once. If you've watched via Twitch, then unfortunately we've kind of been coming and going as our tools prevent us from doing much longer. 
But hopefully you've uh, enjoyed. If you are not watching on one or the other, you can move to the other to watch. Does that make any sense? The replays on uh, YouTube should go up in a few days uh, if I can remember to do them. I pass through a portal all the time and I forget things. You see, all of this is just <laughs> really about my own life. That's what it really is. I want to thank my players for this journey into Dudex. Uh, uh, Menagerie, I guess, is machinery. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again. In Thanks a for weeks. running. My pleasure. <laughs>